Hello, my name is Collection Connoisseur. I collect digital thingamabobs in video games, and today I'm playing Slay the Spire. This time on Slay the Spire, I am not doing a challenge run. This is going to be one very long run, an overexplained run in which I talk about everything that comes to my mind regarding the run. I've done two of these in the past. I've done one for the Watcher, I've done one for the Defect. This time it's going to be the Silent. You can imagine that there will be a fourth one that will cover the Ironclad. However, we're doing the Silent today. The Silent is actually one of my favorite classes in Slay the Spire. Not necessarily the one that I'm the best at, but my favorite. And most of that comes down to Poison. I really enjoy Poison builds in Slay the Spire. Really any game in which you can do long-term damage, damage over time, I really like that. Doesn't mean that it's the best thing to do, but it's my favorite way to play. And Peter, welcome to the stream. Hello. Alright, so let's get started with our, our run with the Silent. Just like I've done previous times, I'm going to bring it up to the, the max ascension level that I have unlocked during my challenge runs. This is a challenge run profile, so I don't have all of the ascension levels unlocked. We're just going to go with the highest that I have unlocked, which happens to be level 7 for the Silent. So, level 7 for the Silent. Level 7 means that elite bosses and normal enemies deal more damage. That's number 2, 3, and 4. We heal less after boss battles, we start each run damaged, and normal enemies have more health. That's what tougher means in that, in that ascension mode. For the silent, I am thinking about the starting deck. The worst thing about the silent, the worst thing, is that the silent starts with 12 cards. The other Classes all start with 10 cards, the Silent starts with 12. My understanding of why this happens is because of Ring of the Snake. Ring of the Snake, at the beginning of each combat, you draw two additional cards. That doesn't mean that the Silent should have two more cards in its starting deck, but it does kind of make the first experience with the Silent easier for new players, because you draw seven cards the first turn, you draw five cards the next turn, and then you shuffle your deck. That immediately goes out the window after the first battle, but I believe that is why the Silent starts with 12 cards instead of 10, because of the Ring of the Snake and to make it easier for new players to understand what just happened. Unfortunately, that puts the Silent at a big disadvantage because the starting cards are terrible. Strikes and defends are terrible. Survivor and, ne and neutralize are okay. And starting with two additional cards that we want to remove really hurts. So that's one of the things that is most problematic about the silent, most difficult about running a good silent run. For these Niao bonuses, I am thinking about upgrading a card or losing my starting relic for a boss relic. Both of those are fine. For the most part, I really don't like this start. These blessings as the start. Getting 250 gold is not bad, but obtaining a curse is terrible. Obtaining a curse is terrible. We could choose that one and go to a very early shop. That would not be a bad idea. That would mean we would remove the curse at that shop. It does mean that every removal past that is going to cost more, which is not great. However, that's one option is get some big starting gold, go to an early shop, remove the curse, and maybe buy a good relic at the shop. Upgrading a card is fine. The one that I would upgrade is Neutralize. The Neutralize upgrade applies two weak. It also applies one more damage. The one more damage is not that special, but two weak is a lot more than one weak. 
Normally the way that I look at the status effects, especially weakness or vulnerable, is that going from 1 to 2 is not a 100% improval, 100% uh, improvement. It is a 150% improvement. This is like two and a half times as good as only applying one of the status. That's how I personally think of it. And then the max HP plus seven is not that special, honestly. Max HP isn't terrible. It is, it is a good thing to get, but it's not that wonderful. So I'm thinking that we either obtain the curse 250 gold, which I, I would only do if we're going to that early shop. The reason I am not going to do that is really because the rest of the act layout doesn't support that for me. I like to get a couple of elites in on my first act. The first elite that we would go to is the burning elite, which is kind of scary. First elite is burning, not the best. We could instead go this way and hit three elites, two in the second half of the act, which is very preferable. The only problem is this first elite we would have to fight without an upgraded card because there's no fireplace before it. However, I am looking at the right side of this act a little bit more favorably than the left side. The left side is really only favorable if we decide to go through this burning elite and go this way, basically, which does lead to another shop. That would mean basically going to three shops, which is a little too much. That's a little too much. So I don't think we're going to choose obtain a curse, gain 250 gold. I said I don't like the second option, so it's really the first one or the last one. Losing your starting relic and obtaining a random boss relic, I think is powerful. It's a quite nice effect. However, you are rolling the dice. And the starting relic for the silent can be very good. The random boss relic that you get is likely to be very good, but could absolutely ruin your run, depending on what you get. So this is a this is a rolling the dice option. I think for this stream, I am not going to roll the dice. I'm going to choose just to upgrade a card. Uh, a not a very not a very wonderful blessing from Niao the Whale. But let's do this. Upgrade Neutralize, so we've got more weakness that we can add. And move on. So since we're not going that path, we're going to this Elite first. I think I'm going to do that. Kind of both of these paths are very similar. This path gives us an option to make a different choice if we just decide to go after that Burning Elite anyway. So I'm thinking about going this way. Let's start. So simple jawworm fight to begin with. This is where neutralize is really nice. Applying weakness add, reduces the damage that creatures would deal by 25%. 25% doesn't seem like a lot, but look at it this way. In order to block this jawworm, we would have to spend three defense. That would be our entire turn's worth of energy. But if we weaken it first, now it only takes two defense, and we can add a strike in. So in, we've basically traded a defend for a strike there while retaining our health. That's a really good effect, and you get that with weakness. Since we added two weakness, it's also weak this turn, that ends up not mattering because of how the Jawworm works. The Jawworm sometimes doesn't attack. So it didn't really do much for us this turn. And this is one of the downsides of having a, a defense character. Is This is not attacking us this turn, and we can't really spend our energy well. We spent two energy usefully. And now, now we're not... We haven't done as much damage to the Jawworm as we wished we had. Again, keeping the Jawworm weakened is very nice. That means we can block everything. 
I do tend to try to block try to block everything if it makes sense. In most battles it makes sense to block everything because oh and here's here's survivor. So we haven't played our survivor yet. Survivor gains eight block, discards one card. When we've got three energy and five cards, that's not a bad effect at all. But anyway, for the most part, I try not to take any damage at the beginning battles. And in the future battles, it's really it's really a question. Can you afford to not to not take any damage? Can you beat the battle fast enough so that blocking as much as possible doesn't cause the creature to deal you tons of damage over time? Here we've got three strikes that finishes the jawworm fight. All right, same as I've done the last couple times, before we look at this card, let's think about what we're doing. Let's philosophize about what we're attempting to do here. And for that, I go to my little chart. So here's my little chart. This is, this is what we are going to fight in Act 1. And actually, I am going to peek at the game real quick. We are fighting. We are fighting Hexaghost as our final boss in this act. So we know that we're not fighting the Guardian or the Slime boss. This is what we're going up against this act. The Silent with the starting deck doesn't do very well against a lot of this. For one, we've got a fair number of. We've got a fair number of skills in the deck, which means that our elite right here, the Gremlin Knob, we're not doing well against. The Silent is famously bad against the Lagavulin because the Lagavulin you have to kill fast enough that it doesn't kill you. It doesn't render all of your cards useless. And the Silent just doesn't have enough attack in its starting deck to do well against Lagavulin. And then there is the sentries. The starting deck of the Silent also doesn't do very well against the sentries. It does a little bit better than it does against the, the other two. So I'm going to make a circle rather than a, you know, pretend that's a circle. A circle rather than X's. But the Silent is not doing very well against the elites with its starting deck. So we really have to focus on how do we defeat elites with the upgrades that we add to our deck. Of course we can defeat the the first few floors of enemies we can do that no problem i say no problem but honestly the jaw worm is bad for the silent more than any other character the jaw worm can actually be a problem and then the rest of the field the silent is not great at either at the beginning it's actually pretty okay against the blue slaver but everything else, you just need to be able to deal with multiple enemies, which we can't do in our starting deck, or deal damage fast enough, which we also can't do in our starting deck. One of the nice things, though, is that weakness works really well on the Hexaghost. I say really well, but honestly, right now, we're not very good against the Hexaghost. So we've got changes to make to allow us to actually defeat the upcoming battles here. And that's what we're thinking about. Oops, I went to the wrong one. Hold on a second. We're going to take a little bit longer to detect the game again. Because I clicked the wrong one. There it goes. So now let's open this. And what we're thinking about is mainly those elites. How do we get better at those elites? Immediately I see an answer here. Blade Dance. However, let's go over all of them. So Sucker Punch applies more weak. This is actually pretty nice with the starting card that you have, Neutralize, because having two cards in your deck that apply weakness essentially means you can keep the enemies weak all the time. However, as a card, Sucker Punch is not great. The seven damage is just barely above strike, and one weak is not that special. The 9 damage in 2 weak is definitely better, but still, for a card that you would add into your deck, Sucker Punch just doesn't do as much as you'd like. Calculated Gamble can be amazing. 
Not something I would take first, but discarding your entire hand and then drawing that many cards, that really allows you to very significantly affect which cards from your deck you're playing each turn. Also, the upgrade removes the exhaust. It's a great card. However, like we've, we've said a few times, we really need damage. Blade Dance adds three shivs to your hands when you play three shivs when you play it. That's one cost to deal 12 damage. One cost 12 damage might remind you of another card, Brilliance from the Watcher. And I said Brilliance from the Watcher is amazing. This is very similar to that, except that you can choose where the damage goes. So it is just a little bit better than Brilliance. And Brilliance is already a really good card. We take Blade Dance. Excellent. Wing Statue allows us to remove a card from the deck. I really do like removing those starting cards. With the Silent, I have a hard time deciding what to remove. And there's two real things here. I want to remove the Strikes because I, I hate the Strikes. I want to remove the Defends because we have too much defense in our starting deck. And in my opinion, if you take two removals, I would probably do Strike and Defend. It's very hard to know what you're going to find, though. This early, especially with an Elite coming, I'm going to remove a Defend, but I have a much harder time with a Silent deciding what to remove, either a Strike or a Defend early, than I do with most of the other starting decks. All right, excellent. Living Wall allows us to remove another card. We could also use this time to upgrade a card or transform a card. I really do like the transform effect. The transform effect essentially removes a starting card and gives you a random other card, which could be really good. It could also give you something to build towards. It can be a little bit better than removing a card. Personally, I think that right now, transform is what I want to do. But upgrade is also something we could do to upgrade our Blade Dance. I'm going to choose to transform. And we're transforming a strike. That's essentially removing a strike from our deck. So we removed a defend, we're now removing a strike. We got Acrobatics. Wonderful card, terrible at the beginning. This draws three cards and discards one. That is great with the Silent. But at the beginning, you just don't have enough energy to really make a whole lot of use of that card. Anyway, it's great for the future, not so great for right now. As before, playing Neutralize weakens this one. That means that one Defend will block it. And with these two, you usually want to split up your damage so that yeah, so I'm going to do that first. So we split up our damage. That removes the curl up on both of them. That makes it easy that it's easy for us to defeat either one of them next turn. And then the question. Playing a strike or a defend does nothing here. So is it worth playing acrobatics? Acrobatics won't allow us to play any more cards this turn. But it would allow us to get rid of these cards in preference for the ones that we've already discarded. I'm not going to do that this time because I think our our draw pile is better than our discard pile for next turn, but that's one thing that you can do with acrobatics. You can essentially trash cards in your deck in preference for things in your discard pile. Now, of course we're going to play Blade Dance. Blade Dance does a whole lot of damage. Right now, 6 and 5, we can defend with a Survivor and a Defend. So let's play Blade Dance first. We know we're doing that. These are dealing 3 damage apiece. 3 damage apiece because we're weakened. That means we could take out the left one and play 1 Defend. I like that. On the other hand, we could take out the right one and play 1 Defend. So we're going to play 1 Defend either way. Well, you know, the one defend is going to be a survivor because that's better than a defend. 
So now, I like to be efficient about my damage. A Shiv Shiv Strike is exactly enough to kill the right one. So let's do the damage that way so we're most efficient about where we're dealing our damage. And win. An attack potion. An attack potion is one of the potions I'd really like to see right now. Having an attack into our deck at a particular time, that's great for the elites that are coming up. So here are three cards that I like, but not right now. Deadly Poison is... well... Of the poison cards, Deadly Poison is probably the worst of the poison cards. Is that true? I think that's true. Deadly Poison is probably the worst of the poison cards. And in particular, it's not great against the elites that we would be up against in this act. It's good against Lagavulin, but it's not great against the sentries who all start with an artifact charge. And it's not great against the, the Gremlin Knob who gains strength when we play skills. The other two don't help us a whole lot yet. Blur is really nice. I really like playing multiple blurs and basically just stacking up block. I think this is a time that we take Calculated Gamble. We want a Calculated Gamble in our deck, so why not take one now? I always like to take gold, so I suggest almost always when you encounter the world of goop, almost always taking the gold. The 11 health for the 75 gold I think is worth it almost all the time, as long as you don't think you're going to die very soon. I don't think we're going to die very soon. So I'm taking the gold. And let's go into our elite battle. It's not going to be easy, but we do have an attack potion to help us. And this is a perfect one to have the attack potion in as well. Also, we don't really like the calculated gamble in this particular elite battle. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the blade dance, deal as much damage as possible. Let's play the attack potion. We are going to want to play it. Why not now? Ooh. Some pretty nice ones. Glass Knife is pretty good. Deals 16 damage for one. Granted, the damage goes down every time, every subsequent time that you play it. But usually, you're only going to play this once, maybe twice. So, it's an amazing card. It is what we want here. So, 16 damage to the Gremlin Knob. Next time we draw it, it will deal 12 damage. Let's play our Strike. And then we get rid of this hand, get rid of the Calculated Gamble, which is not great in this, in this battle. And we do have two attacks next turn. That's good to see. So, of course, play our attacks. The real question is, do we play Survivor? The reason to play Survivor is if we believe that it's going to block more damage than it's going to cause us to take. So what's happening here? We're taking six damage this turn. If we play Survivor, the Gremlin Knob gains two strength, meaning he's dealing eight damage this turn. We'd block all of that. We'd be playing, we'd be saving six damage this turn if we play Survivor this turn. However, this turn he's also applying Vulnerable to us. And Vulnerable means that his next attack is going to deal 50% more damage, which means the two strength that we added is going to cause him to deal three more damage next turn. That's still worth it so far, as long as we win next turn or the turn after. Glass Knife deals 12 damage. The Blade Dance deals 12 damage. A Strike deals 6 damage. That's enough to take out the Gremlin Knob with those three cards, which means we can safely play the Survivor and block. Also, he was weak, which is why that didn't go up to 8 as I said it would. So we are playing the Glass Knife. There's no question whether we play the Glass Knife. 
Now the real problem is Blade Dance doesn't win. Blade Dance requires us to also play a strike. So playing acrobatics doesn't cause us to win because we only have one energy after playing the acrobatics. Next turn we have enough damage to win. So there's no reason not to use this turn to block as much as possible. This blocks for five, but it goes up by two. So that effectively only blocked for three. Same thing here. So those, those two blocks essentially gave us six health. And we take the 14. Ouch. But we are guaranteed to win this turn, so we win. Ho oh, ho, Dead Branch. <laughs> Dead Branch is a very interesting card, or interesting relic. Whenever you exhaust a card, add a random card to your hand. This can be amazing with the exhaust synergies of the Ironclad. The Silent doesn't have exhaust synergies. However, the Silent generates lots of exhausted cards. Those shivs, every one of those shivs exhaust which means this will add random cards into our hand every time we play shivs. That can be good or bad. For the most part, it's good, but it can just shove a whole bunch of useless cards in your deck, or at least cards that are not themed to your deck. Essentially, you draw those cards for free when Dead Branch initially changes them, but every time you draw them next, it's like you're drawing a random card rather than a card that you chose to put in your deck. I still think that it's generally good, but it does mean we have to be careful about how many shivs we're going to play. Accuracy makes shivs deal more damage. So Caltrops is not terrible. I do like Caltrops. Accuracy can be very good if we're going to play lots of shivs. Calculated Gamble, although I want another one of them, I probably don't want it now. Now is not the time. So what do I take here, if anything? Remember, the option to skip is always an option. Accuracy causes our shivs to do more. We kind of want shivs, we kind of don't want too many shivs. But we do have shivs right now. It would effectively double the damage that the shivs from Blade Dance deal. I do think we want the accuracy. The, the Caltrops, granted, is pretty good, and it is good against our Act Boss. Our Act Boss deals damage six times often, which means this does 18 damage every time the, the boss does six damage does damage times six. Also, Caltrops works rather well against the optional final boss, the heart, the corrupt heart. I think right now we want an accuracy though. And the real question is how many shivs we want to eventually add to our deck. And I don't know the answer to that. So right here, we're going to display what Dead Branch does. So, we're going to play Blade Dance, and we're going to take out this slime right here. We got a free card, we got another free card, and another free card. Now, one of those free cards also exhausts itself, which means when we play it, Dead Branch gives us another free card. Granted, we, we discarded it because our hand was full. All right, let's play the Neutralize. That means that to fully block, we only need to play two Defends. Although we did get a card that's better than Defend in that set. So let's do that instead. And then we did get a card that's better than a Strike. We already played our Shiv card. So I think doing the Poison card is better. Let's play Acrobatics because we don't really care about this hand. Playing Acrobatics means that we're going to shuffle this into our draw pile. If we play these cards first, that means that these cards will be more likely to show up. Will show up in our next draw through the deck. If we play it now, these cards don't show up. 
Let's play the poison stab. And then the question here is accuracy or strike? You know, strike causes us to win next turn. With the five poison, that means five damage this turn, four damage next turn. That means all we have to do this turn to win is end turn. One of my favorite things to do in Slay the Spire is to complete a battle by skipping my turn. For some reason, that just feels good. All I did in my final turn was nothing, and I still won. So I'm looking at Deflect here. Setup, I'll, I'll mention, Setup is very hard to make work well. It's very hard to make work well. It can work really well. By the way, the upgrade makes it cost zero. This can work really well. The problem with Setup is it's essentially minus one draw because you have to draw the Setup in order to play it. So even though you're making something cost zero, you are getting one less draw every time you place, every time you draw setup, essentially. Setup works really well with cards that draw cards, like acrobatics, because you can set up a card and then play acrobatics to immediately draw it. However, it's hard to make work well. Prepared, I really like prepared. However, prepared kind of requires an upgrade, because it is much better with that upgrade. The way that it works initially, remember it costs you one draw to draw prepared. So even though it says draw one card on it, it's really only replacing the draw that you spent drawing prepared. So initially it's quite bad. The deflect I think is often good, especially if, if you draw lots of cards in your deck. Having a zero cost card can be much better because you draw too many cards to spend all of your energy anyway. I think we're going to be in just that situation in our deck. So let's, place a let's play a Deflect. The Looter. The Looter takes my money. I'd prefer him not to take my money. There's several options here. One of them is playing Accuracy and then playing Blade Dance that would deal 24 damage on the first turn. 24 damage is a, lot of, is a lot of damage, but it does mean we would take a lot of damage, and we don't like that. I think one of the things that we want to do right now is to play Blade Dance and see what we get out of Dead Branch. Let's do that first. So we're dealing less damage because we did not play Accuracy. Well, actually, we got a Backstab. So Backstab with Dead Branch is pretty interesting because it also exhausts, so it's kind of like a free 11 damage. And then another couple shivs. Oh great, we got a Leg Sweep. So Leg Sweep is one card that applies 11 block. Better than playing two defends, really helps us this turn. And since it applies two weak, it helps us next turn too. Grand Finale is mostly unplayable can only be played if there are no cards in your draw pile. It would be hard for us to get into that situation right now. I do like Neutralize. One of the things to think about here is the Calculated Gamble, because remember when we play it, we draw only as many cards as we discard. So for example, if we play it right now, we will discard these three cards, draw these three cards. Since we know exactly which ones we are going to draw, we know that playing Survivor is better than playing these two defense. Might as well guarantee we get that Survivor. And since it exhausts, we got the Dead Branch effect, which it's on a card that we could play. It's not very good in this battle. Let's not worry about it. Discard that one, play the two strikes. And we easily can win this battle because we drew Blade Dance, our one energy 12 damage card. It's quite good. We steal our gold back, get more gold. And what are we thinking about here? So we're mainly thinking about the remaining elites and the boss. I clicked the wrong thing there. So we've got two more elites, 
We know the next elite that we fight is not going to be Gremlin Knob. We know this because the two, two elites in a row are never the same elite. So we fought a Gremlin, Gremlin Knob already, we're not going to fight Gremlin Knob next. The one after that could be Gremlin Knob, we don't know. But we know this one is not Gremlin Knob. Crippling Cloud is a pretty strong card. It's another exhaust card. <laughs> kind of goes with Dead Branch. Kind of. And it's a poison card that applies weakness as well. I think Crippling Cloud can be quite good, especially with an upgrade. The upgrade makes that poison 7, and 7 poison is so much more than 4 poison. I've talked about Sucker Punch. We definitely don't need Sucker Punch. Poison Stab is basically a strike upgrade. It gets a lot better if you have more poison in your deck. But until you do, it's kind of like dealing 11 damage. I say 11 damage because it deals 6 damage the first turn, 3 poison at the beginning of the enemy's turn, and then as long as the battle takes one more turn, you're going to deal two additional poison before their next action. So it's kind of like 11 damage. That's that's good, but it's kind of not enough. And it's only 11 damage if the fight takes that long and they don't have artifact charges. Compare that to Crippling Cloud, which hits all the enemies and does four damage with the poison and then three damage with the poison. So as long as there's two enemies, this is dealing... How much is that? 14 damage. I think Crippling Cloud is quite good. It's also really nice to have a two-cost card sometimes, because if you have two energy and you have a whole bunch of block, it's nice to have a two-cost card that you can rely on. Alright, our first chest. We get Peace Pipe. You know, it's not bad. Peace Pipe. Peace Pipe is a favorite artifact of mine that's not necessarily that good. Removing cards from your deck at rest sites is strong. It is strong. But also upgrading cards at rest rest sites is also strong. So the problem is, even though it adds a very strong effect, it's it's an option that you have to choose instead of a different, very strong effect. Of course, we're going to take it right here. But the problem with Peace Pipe is the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of choosing to Toke versus Smith is, is a real opportunity cost. In this circumstance, I think I want both of them, honestly. I think we take this time to remove a strike, though. Do we take this time to remove a strike? I think we remove a strike. Let's remove a strike. That's using a toke. Remove one strike. And let's go into another elite. Now, this elite, I've said before that the silent is not very good at. We have gotten a lot better at this elite. Part of that is just blade dance, but part of that is dead branch. So, Dead Branch makes this elite fight much, much different. These add Dazed into our deck, and Dazed cards exhaust, which means they give us free cards. So instead of polluting our deck with worthless cards, it pollutes our deck with random cards, which we can use. So, great. So first turn, let's play the Deflect because there's no reason not to. Let's play the Blade Dance. And usually you want to fight the outermost one that has the least attack. So we're going to do that this time. Outermost one with the least attack. All out attack. Very good card. Deals 10 damage to all enemies. We discard a card at random. The fact that that's random can be painful. However, 10 damage to all enemies is very good right now. We don't want to play it first because it's random discard. We would rather play the cards we want to play. I want to play Survivor. If we play Survivor, we definitely block all the damage that's coming in. 
then we can feel free to play all out attack. So one of the things we could do with Doppelganger, I think that Doppelganger is going to be quite bad in this battle. So why not play it now for zero and get the random card from Peace Pipe, which was a Blade Dance, not a bad card to get. I said from Peace Pipe, I meant from Dead Branch. All right, this turn, this turn is going to be unfortunate because 20 damage is coming in. What are we going to do about that? One thing that we could do is play Acrobatics to draw those three cards and then play Calculated Gamble. I think that would be quite good. Playing the Neutralize is not bad. Playing the Neutralize instead of Calculated Gamble is not bad. The Crippling Cloud is something we might want to play because these will block the poison, but it won't block the weakness. So Crippling Cloud essentially blocks for six because Yes, because they will be doing 7 damage after the weakness, and that means that we're taking 6 less damage overall. A lot of interesting choices here. I think the most interesting to me is what I said first, the acrobatics into the calculated gamble. Let's play neutralize first. Acrobatics, we know which ones we're going to draw. Let's get rid of the accuracy this battle. Let's get rid of... yeah, let's get rid of the accuracy right now. So we're going to play Calculated Gamble. Do we want to play Strike beforehand? Because that means if we get another Strike, we knock him out. I think we do. So we're going to draw three cards, and the Exhaust is going to give us a random card. How about that? We got Dagger Spray, which also does damage to all enemies. It's not as good as All Out Attack right now, but still, not bad. So we kill that one on the right, we take 10 damage. Taking 10 damage in an elite fight, that's not bad. In Act 1, 10 damage in an elite fight is pretty average, I would say. So this turn we can defend, defend, and terror. Terror won't do anything other than get rid of a, an artifact charge and give us a free card. Let's try it. We got quick slash. Interesting. I would like to defend fully this turn though, so let's defend fully instead of playing quick slash. We're going to get a free card off of the dazed because it has ethereal, which means it exhausts itself. And our Dead Branch gives us a free card. Another Blade Dance, for that matter. We have a lot of Blade Dances. So, I'm going to play Deflect first. This is to make space in my hand. Because we're going to play a Blade Dance. We can kill this one. Might as well kill it rather than let it attack us. We got another zero cost card that does four damage and exhausts. And we got another one that adds a shiv into our into our hand. All right. Let's play another blade dance. Shiv there. We got another blade dance. Excellent. We got even a backstab. How about that? So we basically won this turn solely from from Dead Branch. I'm going to play the prepared in order to discard a card. That makes more space in our hand for for what I meant to play, the Blade Dance, but in any way, we, we got Neutralize in one. All right, this, all right, so this one is an excellent, excellent relic. Potions always appear in combat rewards. Potions can be a huge thing in Slay the Spire, and normally you don't get that many potions. White Beast Statue completely changes the math there. Getting a potion in every battle means that you can play a potion in every battle and remain even. That is quite strong. Blessing of the Forge, pretty good when we've not upgraded a single card in our deck. That means that we can do an upgrade to our entire hand once. 
Prozion agrees with me. White Beast statue is very good early. I tend not to like these cards. So Predator is not bad. The draw two additional cards next turn makes it a lot worse than it looks. It's, it's not bad. With all of the pseudo card draw that we're getting off of Dead Branch, it's probably not what we want to choose though. This might be a time that we take Poison Stab but honestly, I don't know if I care about Poison Stab that much. We could just take nothing. I think let's take nothing. I want to see more cards before I take one of these. Alright, next battle. You can see how good the Deflect has been, by the way. The deflect has made it so that we've been able to we've been able to play it multiple times in turns that we already had plenty of ways to spend our energy. Crippling Cloud makes both of them weak, and it puts poison on both of them. That's much better than a strike, especially since we can also play Survivor and block fully after playing Crippling Cloud. It also gave us a Cloak and Dagger, which is better than Survivor right now, because it still blocks fully, and gives us a Shiv. In this battle, I usually focus on the Louse first, instead of the Fungi Beast. There's two reasons for that. The Fungi Beast, when it dies, applies too vulnerable. The other reason is that this one just has le less health. You usually want to kill, in multi-enemy fights, you usually want to kill the ones with less health first. Accuracy plus Blade Dance does 24 damage. That's enough to outright kill the Fungi Beast, and the Neutralize kills this one. So Accuracy, Blade Dance, make, makes these do 8 damage apiece. That is enough to defeat this one. And then I said Neutralize was enough to defeat this one, that's because 4 damage plus the 3 poison wins. We got a Fire Potion, deal 20 damage. Not my favorite potion, but useful. Always a useful one. I kind of like Dash. Dash is a way for us to get a lot of block out of one card. I kind of like Masterful Stab. The main problem with Masterful Stab is written on the card. It costs more every time you lose HP this combat, which means it's really good in combats that are easy, and really bad in combats that are not easy. Granted, when you draw it early, it, it's really good. It helps you early in the combat, but it's really painful later. In particular, I find this to be quite bad in the Corrupt Heart battle or really any battle that does damage multiple times in one turn. Because if, if an enemy does damage multiple times in one turn, that skyrockets the cost of this. And Prozion is mentioning a specific battle. There's a battle with three birds in Act 2, where each of the birds does one damage six times. It might be five times on Ascension 7, but there's birds that do damage five or six times and there's three of them. So if one of them hits you once, then this goes to costing six. It can be bad. It also can be good. Really depends on your deck. I think this is a time that I would prefer to pick up Caltrops because I find Caltrops to be surprisingly good in a lot of battles. For one, it's good in all the battles where Masterful Stab is bad. Those three birds in Act 2 die really fast to a Caltrops. Caltrops is also really good against our Act boss. Let's take the Caltrops. Caltrops is another one I want to upgrade though, which is a problem because we've got the Peace Pipe. 
Oh, we found Gremlin Knob again. We might use our Fire Potion in this battle. Just to put that out there immediately. This turn, definitely Acrobatics. Definitely Strike. No reason not to play the Caltrops as well. The rest of these cards, it's unfortunate that we drew them, but it's better drawing them this turn than next turn. So of course we're playing Blade Dance. Let's start there. We play Blade Dance. It does increase the attack of Gremlin, Gremlin Knob, which is painful, but it also does 24 damage and gives us three cards. Die, die, die is quite nice. 13 damage to all enemies and it exhausts, meaning we get another free card out of it. Let's do that. Phantasmal Killer is a very interesting card. Next turn, our attacks deal double damage. That's not great next turn. The real question right now is whether we play Calculated Gamble, take more damage right now in order to potentially deal some more. And then there's All Out Attack. So All Out Attack does 10 damage right now to the Gremlin Knob and discards a random card. I think we play All Out Attack. The question is whether we play All Out Attack or a Defend, basically. If we play the Defend, we are taking... He would go up to 12, so we'd be taking 7 damage this turn. And we might win next turn because of our, our Fire Potion. I think it's a better chance to win next turn if we play All Out Attack, though. Let's play it. That means we're taking 10 damage. Unfortunate that we discarded the one other card that we could play, because I was gonna consider playing that to play Neutralize this turn. But oh well, we didn't get it. Take the 10. And unfortunately, we didn't draw well. We can play Acrobatics. Note, we've got the Fire Potion. So if we play Neutralize, Strike, and Fire Potion, we win this turn. That means that we can potentially find a different way to win, and we're guaranteed to not have... to not take this 30 damage. So did we find a different way to win? We didn't really, because the all-out attack does 10, the strike does 4. If we had found Blade Dance, we would have won. So, let's use the Fire Potion, and win with our Strike. We got Ninja Scroll. At the start of each combat, add three shivs to our hand. Note that that means Dead Branch is going to give us three random cards as well on our starting turn. And because of the Ring of the Snake, we're going to have ten cards in our starting turn. Two additional from the Ring of the Snake, five original, and three from the Ninja Scroll. Alright. Hellless Potion, not my favorite potion. Very honest, not my favorite potion. Alright, with what we have, a thousand cuts is quite good, but it's risky. It's very risky to play a thousand cuts, especially because you kind of have to upgrade it. The double effect from a thousand cuts is necessary, and you have to play it before you play all those shiv cards in, in order for all the shiv cards to do the extra damage. I do really like thousand cuts, but also backflip is quite nice. Backflip is so much better than a defend because drawing two cards is really good. Also, shout out to burst because Burst can double Blade Dance, or double Crippling Cloud, or double Acrobatics. Burst can be very nice, even without the upgrade. This is a hard choice. And Eleanor, welcome to the stream. I am doing quite well. Thank you. I have a hard time picking this one, honestly. I I have reasons to pick all three cards. The main reason not to pick a thousand cuts is because it it's expensive. 
If it wasn't expensive, I would pick it immediately, though. I kind of want it. It's hard not to pick backflip when offered backflip, however. And there is a problem of having too many powers. If you have too many powers, there's too much setup time. I think given the two rare cards and the one common card, I'm choosing the common card. Backflip is just too solid of a card. So we're taking backflip, but honestly, I had reasons to take all three of those, and I would not I would not think any one of those choices would be the wrong choice. Alright, very dangerous battle. One of one of the most dangerous normal enemy fights in Act 1. So what do we do? Well for one, we've got accuracy and three shivs, which means that does that does a lot of damage. We should probably start there. The question is whether we use Blessing of the Forge before we do that. The Blessing of the Forge would make the shivs do six damage, and I think it makes the accuracy also add six damage, so it would mean that the shivs do 12 damage apiece. It's not bad. And also, we might want those Deflect and Defend upgrades. Yeah, let's let's do the Blessing of the Forge now. This can be a very dangerous battle. So we get our Accuracy, we get our Shiv. This Shiv takes this one out. We found a Burst. Don't really care for the Burst right now. Let's play our Deflect, because we know we're going to play the Deflect. Next, do we just take out this one? I think we do. Takes out another enemy. Ho-ho, Flesh Hats does four damage for each skill in our hand. We've got five skills, so it does 20 damage. 20 damage kills this one outright. And then we could play a Shiv and a Defend. That would be a solid end to this turn. Or we could play Calculated Gamble and hope for more. I I think we could definitely hope for more. Let's play the Shiv. And Calculated Gamble. And our hope for more turned out to give us some good stuff. Neutralize takes this one out. Strike puts some damage there. And at the end of turn one, there was one enemy left alive. We got a Poison Potion. Not a great po potion, but honestly, it's pretty nice against bosses. So Backstab is innate. The nice thing about Backstab is it works really well in normal enemy fights. It's not great against anything else. Dealing 11 damage on the first turn is often not extremely special, but it is really good in the normal enemy fights. And I think normal enemies is where our current deck doesn't do amazing. It does just fine. But I think that backstab making the normal enemy fights easier is quite good. Outmaneuver. Outmaneuver is not great. Concentrate. Concentrate is quite good. So, so let's talk about both of these. Outmaneuver. The problem with outmaneuver is that you get the energy next turn. That's really the problem. The fact that Outmaneuver is a slow card makes it hard to play, especially because it always costs one. The upgrade adds more energy next turn, but it still costs one this turn. So you have to make sacrifices the turn that you play it in order to get the benefit. And that that's often pretty hard to play. Concentrate is quite good. One of the reasons that Concentrate, concentrate is quite good. So discard three cards, gain, gain two energy, is very hard to play with most of the time. 
It's much easier to play with if you constantly have a lot of cards to discard, if your deck draws lots of cards. We happen to have a relic that draws us cards all the time. So we're going to frequently have three cards that we would be happy to discard. So, I, I'm really liking Concentrate, rather than the Backstab Mystery Box. Let's take Concentrate. This is probably the earliest I've ever taken a Concentrate and felt good about it, by the way. So, one question, do we rest? We've got 11 health, which means it might be good to rest. One of the weird things here is that specifically the Hexaghost, specifically the battle that we're about to go in, it's one of, I think it's the only battle in the game where how much damage the enemy deals you is based on your current health. So going in with less health causes the enemy to do less damage to us on turn two. So it's one of the times where resting can actually hurt you because you rest, you gain more health, and then the enemy does more damage to you. I really don't want to rest. What I really want to do is smith. I want to smith accuracy or blade dance. That's what I want to do. And I think with two potions, granted not the best potions for survivability, but I think with two potions we can probably get by this boss battle with only 11 health. Let's smith. And what do we smith? I think we're smithing accuracy. Because that makes... That makes all the shivs do more damage. Including potentially the shivs that we get on turn 1. Alright, so I've made the risky play. Let's see if I can... I can defend that risky play. So first off, we're going to add poison to the boss. There's not really an enemy that we're going to fight that adding poison to is going to be better than the boss right here, so let's do that. Secondly, neutralize is great because it means Hexaghost is weak next turn. And then Crippling Cloud is pretty good because it adds poison. So we might do Crippling Cloud, but first let's play these shivs. Find out what we get out of the shivs. Ooh, a heal hook. Heal hook, when the enemy is weak, which our enemy is weak, we gain one energy and draw one card. It's a free card. Unfortunately, we did not draw accuracy. I was hoping for an accuracy there, to be honest, but we did not get it. Piercing Whale, quite good in this battle. All enemies lose 6 strength this turn. Works great when enemies deal you damage multiple times in one hit. And Grand Finale, <laughs> very hard to play. <laughs> very hard to play. Alright, so we can play Concentrate here. We don't care about Piercing Whale, Defend, or Grand Finale this turn. So now we've got lots of energy. In fact, we could play a Backflip right now. I think that would be good. To draw more cards. And that means we've got a Blade Dance. Blade Dance means that we get even more cards because of these these all exhaust. So now we've got more cards to choose from. I will do the Crippling Cloud. And we got Wraith Form. Very nice. Very nice to get a random Wraith Form. So now, to deal the most damage next turn would be playing Caltrops here. Are we guaranteed to block well next turn? We're not guaranteed, but we're likely to block just fine, because we came in with only 11 health. Otherwise, I would play the dodge and roll. So let's play the Caltrops. And because our enemy is weakened and we came in with 11 health, the enemy does zero damage. <laughs> I thought it would do more than zero, honestly. I guess that means let's play Acrobatics. Discard this Defend, play both the Caltrops and the Accuracy. And I don't feel the need to play Calculated Gamble yet. We'll play it the next time we draw it. So the boss is dealing 0 times 6 to us, and it's taking 6 times 6 back. 
wonderful. All right, don't need to play Wraith form just yet. The two intangible is very nice, of course, but we can block this with just a backflip or for that matter, a dodge and roll. But I'm going to play the backflip because there's not many more cards that we want to play in our hand. And there's still not that many cards we want to play in our hand. So let's play the dodge and roll as well. So we have block next turn. Now Hexaghost adds a burn to our deck, which is not great, but we do happen to have a few ways to discard cards, which is a way to get get rid of those burns, basically. Heel Hook is great, of course. It's a free card. By the way, if you did not know, when a card uses an optional effect, an effect that is contextual, it has a little gold border around it when it's using that special effect. So the fact that Heel Hook is gold instead of the little blue border means that Heel Hook is going to get the extra effect of the card. Very nice little UI bit. Defend so that we defend everything. Remember, because Hexaghost hits us multiple times, it's taking a lot of damage back from our thorns. How about that? <laughs> we drew Grand Finale. So, Grand Finale... Grand Finale is amazing if you have no cards in your draw pile. We've got three in our draw pile. However, we also have a card that draws three cards in our hand. So if we play Acrobatics to draw three cards, discard any of them, now the Grand Finale can be played and deal 50 damage. I'm going to play the Blade Dance first. Blade Dance first, Shiv, Shiv, Shiv. What I really want is for Grand Finality to win the battle. <laughs> That's what I really want. And it doesn't look like we're necessarily going to get that. However, if we play Cloak and Dagger, we have another chance. Skewer. Not what I was looking for, particularly. But I think it does do what I want, doesn't it? So Concentrate discards three cards. One, two, three. Skewer does 14 damage. And then Grand Finale to complete the battle. I really like it when cards have names that make sense when you play them. So I really wanted to end the battle with Grand Finale, and I made that happen. We get an Energy Potion, very good for the deck that we've built so far. You know, most of that is due to Dead Branch. Ooh, Adrenaline can be quite good. It also is another thing that exhausts and draws us cards. Grand Finale, I've mentioned a couple times now that it's hard to play. It's pretty hard to play with the deck that we have. We managed to do it that time, but that's not going to be very normal. So we're not going to add a Grand Finale to our deck. Nightmare can be amazing. It really can be amazing. It costs three, though. It's hard to set up. The thing that makes it easier to set up is if you have more energy in your deck, which you can achieve with an Adrenaline. I think having another thing that gives us energy and draws cards can be very good, especially alongside our Concentrate. I think Adrenaline is great. Let's take it. All right, the Slaver's Collar. Slaver's Collar, boss in Elite Battles, you get an extra energy every turn. That can be very good. It has no downside, which is enormous. Not having a downside makes Slaver's Collar look really good compared to other ones, like Busted Crown. Busted Crown, you gain an energy at the start of every turn, but you also get less choices in future card rewards. So Busted Crown has a huge downside. The downside for Slaver's Collar is that it doesn't work in normal fights, which is a pretty significant downside that's hard for people to, to really notice. 
the reason that this is harder to take than things that have real downsides but also affect normal battles is that normal battles can deal you a lot of damage. Runic Pyramid, amazing, amazing relic. I recently played with it in my... I played with it in two different runs in my recent challenge runs, and Runic Pyramid was amazing. Runic Pyramid can be harder to play with when you have Dead Branch, because Dead Branch adds random cards into your hand that you don't necessarily want to play, so the Runic Pyramid keeps them in your hand, which means you can't draw as many cards from your deck. The problem with Runic Pyramid is Hand Clog. When you get a whole bunch of cards that you don't want to play in your hand, which means you can't draw cards from your deck. And that, that can happen in a normal playthrough, but it's very easy to happen when you have Dead Branch. So we're not going to take Runic Pyramid as much as I usually like it. Busted Crown has a really significant downside. Taking Busted Crown this early can be quite painful. I talked about the downside to Slaver's Collar, but I think that I'm still going to take it over Busted Crown. So Slaver's Collar, we're worse in normal enemy fights, but we're better in elite fights because we have more energy. All right, Act 2. The boss that we have for Act 2 is the Bronze Automaton. So the Bronze Automaton, the main problem with the Bronze Automaton is that there's one turn that you're going to take a whole lot of damage. If you can't block it, win before you get there, or, or other effects. So the Bronze Automaton, we either have to be able to win really fast, not that likely with what we've done so far, or we have to have a really good block solution, which we don't yet have. So Bronze Automaton is something we have to keep in mind to beat this act. We are better in elite fights. We have a whole lot of money, which really makes me want to go to a shop. And we get a lot of benefits out of fireplaces because we've got the Pete's Pipe and a lot of cards to upgrade. So I want to go to a lot of fireplaces too. It looks like if we go in the center, we get, we really only can get two elites. So if we go to this elite, we can only get one more we go to this elite, we can only get one more. Same with this one. So we're only going to be able to fight two elites. In that case, how many fireplaces can we go to maximum? I see one, two, three, four. Four fireplaces, two elites. That maximizes fireplaces and elites. And it goes to an early shop. So that's, that's the way we're going. The Spirit Guardian. Spirit Guardian has three artifact charges, which means weakness effects have a more difficult time. Poison effects have a more difficult time. This is a lot more significant against any other character, though. The Silent adds so many status effects to enemies that these three deep, these three artifact charges can go down quite quickly. Let's do the Adrenaline next, I think. How many cards do we have in our hand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's not enough. Adrenaline, you play it, it draws two cards, it exhausts, gives you another card. So we need to have one less card in our hand before we can Adrenaline and get all three cards. There we go. And exactly what I wanted to see. I wanted our accuracy before we played our starting shivs. Great. And then we can Calculated Gamble. That would draw almost all of these cards. It might draw us Blade Dance, which would allow us to win this turn. Let's try it. We did get Blade Dance. That can allow us to win this turn. We need to sp make space in our hand first, though. 
There we go. Win on the first turn. Feels good. A fear potion. Applying three vulnerable. I like it. That that we could use against anything that really gives us a gives us a trouble. Okay, do we want any of these cards? Not really. Not really. If dodge and roll were upgraded, I would take it, but if it's not upgraded, I don't think we want it. I wouldn't mind another acrobatics. But we have enough things that draw cards that I don't think we specifically need it. Maybe we take an acrobatics anyway? I don't know. I think we don't. Just because we often have a lot of cards in our hand. Let's skip it. Alright. So we've got Noxious Fumes for sale. I like Noxious Fumes. We have <laughs> we have an interesting counter synergy. So Strange Spoon causes cards which exhaust when played. 50% of the times they'll discard instead. This is an anti-synergy because it makes it so Dead Branch doesn't affect some of the cards. It's also an anti-synergy for many of the cards that we would have. Some of the cards we actually want them to exhaust. We've got War Paint. When we pick it up, upgrade two random skills. That's not bad. It'd be better if we had less defense in our deck. But we have a lot of skills which we would be happy to have upgraded. Such as Crippling Cloud, Adrenaline, Backflip, Concentrate, Calculated Gamble. We have a lot of skills that we want upgraded. And then, Art of War. If you do not play any attacks during your turn, gain an additional energy next turn. Can be quite good, especially with the Silent, if you're going a Poison Silent build. We're not doing that, so it doesn't probably affect us much. There's also the Leg Sweep. I said that for our boss, we wanted to have one big block. We wanted to have one turn where we had one big block. Leg Sweep is actually pretty good for that. And then Noxious Fumes. I really like Noxious Fumes. It, en it enhances the poison quite a lot to have just two poison added every single turn. I like it. We're not doing too much with poison, however. We've got the Crippling Cloud. But if there's anything that gets me into a poison deck easily, it's Noxious Fumes. You can usually afford to put one Noxious Fumes in your deck. If nothing else, it removes artifact charges from enemies, which can be amazing. So I'm thinking I want Noxious Fumes, Leg Sweep, the War Paint, and Remove a card. Can we do all of that? I think we can. How about that? We're going to do the Leg Sweep first. We're going to remove a card next. What card do we want the least in our deck? I mean, I kind of want to remove a defend, but I also kind of want to remove the strikes. We get so many attacks from exhausted cards that I don't think we need the strikes. Let's remove a strike. And then let's take the Noxious Fume and let's upgrade two skills. Ho oh, ho, we got Survivor and Leg Sweep. We got lucky. There's also something to be said for Bandage Up because of Dead Branch. You know, I usually don't take Bandage Up, but because we have Dead Branch, I think I will. Let's, let's take a very speculative Bandage Up. I have not played with Bandage Up, often enough to really have a good idea of whether this was a good a good thing to do. However, I want to try it because I feel like it could actually be good this time. The Shelled Parasite. We happen to get an accuracy and blade dance and the three shivs. 
seems like a good start. Let's start with accuracy and deflect. We probably want to play our adrenaline next while we have space in our hand. Nice. We got survivor which can block. I like that. Let's play our shivs. We got another blade dance. The problem is space in our hand now, which means we probably want to play Survivor to make space. So now we play another another blade dance. Fleshettes does 16 damage. Blade dance does more than that, but only if we can fit the cards in our hand, which we can't. Blade dance would give us one shiv. So I guess we play Fleshettes. And already the Shelled Parasites has 5 plated armor and is down to 11 health after the first turn. I think that's pretty good. Let's bandage up. And... You know, this is not a great hand. We probably want to play Calculated Gamble this turn. I'm just thinking about whether we play Neutralize first. Do we play Neutralize first? I think we don't. Do we play the Defend first? We really want to draw a Leg Sweep. Let's, let's make it the highest chance we do that. There we go, we got our Leg Sweep. And Noxious Fumes deal some damage. We could play the Prepared just to get rid of one of these cards, but I'm fine drawing both of those cards. Or all of those cards, I guess. Can we win this turn? We've got a Strike. And another Strike. That's not great. Let's start with Prepared. We drew a Footwork. Footwork defends. I don't think the Crippling Cloud does enough, so let's discard the Crippling Cloud. We're going to take some damage here, unless we use a potion. We use a potion. So two strikes right now does 12 damage. 12 damage leaves our enemy at essentially six health, but minus the two, four health. That means that the Fear Potion wins. Let's use the Fear Potion to not take damage, especially since we we get a potion every single combat. A weak potion. Not bad. And this is probably where I take a thousand cuts. <laughs> I, I want a thousand cuts. I want a thousand cuts in the deck. I really do. It's probably not the best, but I want it. I want it so bad we're taking it. <laughs> it just seems like it's really good in this deck. Alright. Writhe is unplayable in and innate. That's not great. We could potentially remove it in the future. Also, because it's 50% chance we're not guaranteed to get it, that goes up in later ascension levels. Later Ascension levels, you just get a 100% chance. I think because we have Peace Pipe, I do not mind potentially taking a Writhe here for a Relic. But for the most part, if you're offered a Relic that comes with a Curse, it's usually not worth it. A Relic that comes with 50% chance of a Curse? Not sure. With the Peace Pipe, I'm definitely willing to do it. Ho ho, we didn't get the the curse. Whenever we rest, we may add a card to our deck. I mean, what if we just never rest though? Then it does nothing. Ho ho, receive five apparition. Alright. Five apparition is very strong. Apparitions also exhaust, by the way. I told you that we needed a very strong defensive turn, and Apparitions add a very strong defensive turn. 
With the Silent, we also have the ability to discard cards sometimes, which means that the Apparitions which would exhaust themselves because they have Ethereal, you could just discard them, and then they don't get exhausted, and they go back in your deck so you can draw them again. This is amazing. The 35 max health loss is not great. It's especially not great because the bandage up now feels like a bad play. But the 5 Apparition is very much worth it. Let's take that 5 Apparition. Very strong card. Now then, what are we smithing? We could toke. I think we want to smith a thousand cuts. There's a lot of good things to smith, but a thousand cuts is one of the ones that kind of demands to be smithed. So let's do that. All right, the gremlin leader with its two, two gremlins. So the gremlin leader fight is an interesting one because you can affect the fight. If you kill the gremlins, then the gremlin leader has a smaller chance to attack you. It has a greater chance to put out more gremlins. And that, that scales up too. The more gremlins you defeat, the less chance the gremlin leader is going to attack you. So this is a very interesting battle where you can actually affect what the boss is going to do, affect what the enemy is going to do with what you play. Now, first turn here. We are definitely going to play Accuracy, and we're definitely going to play the Shivs. We probably want to play Apparition. There's a lot of damage coming in. We play Apparition, a lot of damage stops coming in. We could play another Apparition. However, Gremlin Leader. I actually have the, the Bestiary mod, the Bestiary mod installed, so that means I can right-click on him and see what he's going to do. So these are his three things. He's currently stabbing us. You can see that, oh, what I just said, when he's got different chances to rally, depending on, on how many allies he has alive. However, he's going, to, he's going to be doing rally or encourage if the previous move was stab. He'll never do stab twice in a row. So we know that he's not going to attack next turn. Knowing that he doesn't attack next turn means that playing this Apparition does nothing. So we're not playing the Apparition because we know Gremlin Leader is not going to attack next turn. We can play a Defend to block everything that's coming in this turn. I think the Bandage Up is going to be quite bad, so I am probably going to play it to just get rid of it. But let's Shiv first. Oh, we got Die, 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 which kills all of the little ones. Let's do that. And now I don't want to play Bandage Up. Because it's just going to give me a random card that we probably can't play. Sure. Let's, let's save it for a future turn. Alright. Let's play a thousand cuts. Thousand Cuts is fine in this battle. It might not be great with the fact that we're probably going to win this battle very soon, but it's a fine card in this battle. We want to discard these two Apparitions because they're not doing anything for us right now, so we're going to play Calculated Gamble. Are we going to play Poison Stab? Or Outmaneuver? Play an out maneuver. Next turn we get more energy. And then calculated gamble. I do like in Venom, whenever an attack deals unblocked damage, apply one poison. We will apply a lot of unblocked damage with blade dances. In Venom costing two, do I still play it? I think I still play it. Alright, Angry Gremlin, the Mad Gremlin, and the Gremlin Wizard. So the Gremlin Wizard is one that you really want to defeat quickly, because it does a lot of damage if you leave it alive. Now recall, every card that we play, we're dealing 2 damage. 
So we are going to be dealing a lot of damage to these gremlins just passively. Ooh, look at this. Tactician, if this card is discarded from your hand, gain energy. So if I play Acrobatics and discard Tactician, we gain energy this turn. Very nice. Playing the Deflect just to get it out of my hand. The Noxious Fumes because it's quite nice to play. Let's play a Shiv against the boss. And we get Die 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 yet again, you know? Let's play that again. Get rid of all the Gremlins. Storm of Steel. Discard your hand, add a Shiv to your hand for each card discarded. Actually really great in our current deck. We discard our hand, we get a bunch of shivs, and all of the shivs give us random cards. Alright, very clean elite battle. I think our deck is quite good. Ink Bottle, whenever we play 10 cards, draw one card. With the number of cards that we play, we're going to get that draw one card quite frequently. The skill potion, not my favorite potion, but I think I like it more than a colorless potion. So I'm going to discard the colorless potion and take the skill potion. But I'm pretty happy to replace that one too. So, Escape Plan. Escape Plan is another zero cost card. It does draw us a card. And if you draw a skill, you gain five block. I tend to like Escape Plan a lot, but compare it with Deflect. So Deflect gives you the block for sure. Escape Plan sometimes gives you, the, gives you the block, but it always draws you a card. In some decks, this is amazing. It adds block all the time. In some decks, it adds block some of the time. Ours, it's quite good. We've got a lot of skills in the deck. Even our attacks are also sometimes skills. We also have a lot of apparitions. It's quite nice. The real downside to Escape Plan is the Time Eater and the Corrupt Heart. Two enemies that punish you for playing cards, for playing more cards. So if you play an Escape Plan, you get very little out of playing this card, and you might get a, a downside from the boss. Now our deck kind of gains benefits somewhat for playing more cards, so we're going to take this Escape Plan especially because it's upgraded. But there are downsides to Escape Plan. It looks like a card that's always good, but sometimes it has downsides. I probably want to smith another card. There are a lot of good choices. One of the choices is Apparition. One of the choices is Apparition. One of the choices is Consecrate. One of the choices is Calculated Gamble. I think what we want most to smith is Calculated Gamble. Let's do that. Make it so that it does not exhaust. It means that it is kind of better and kind of worse with Dead Branch. Alright, a Happy Flower. Every three turns we gain an energy. Not bad. More energy every third turn. Not bad. And we are going this way, so let's keep going. The Chosen. The Chosen punishes you for playing lots of skills, but it doesn't punish you for playing lots of skills until turn three at this ascension level. So right now it's not doing too much to us. I really want to play a thousand cuts to start with. And then we can just start playing cards. We are going to be dealing damage to the cultist all the time. So let's shiv, shiv, shiv. We drew an accuracy there. I could have played the accuracy instead of one of the shivs. Probably would have been right. Concentrate can discard three cards to gain two energy. We should play that this turn. We're not going to play at Predator, so we're not going to play Predator, Defend, or Strike. Now we've got more energy. We could play Accuracy, Tools of the Trade, and Survivor. I like that. 
this blocks fully. It does damage to both of them from the from the thousand cuts. And it gets out a bunch of powers right now, which is not bad either. So we have to choose a card to discard. This is from Tools of the Trade. We drew an extra one, but we have to discard one. The Caltrops is not going to be great in this battle, so let's discard that one. For that matter, we're not really wanting to play most of these cards. Let's play Adrenaline to see what we draw. Okay, so an Accuracy plus Blade Dance does a lot. Let's do that. I'm wondering if we ever have to hit the Cultist directly or if it just dies from all of the random damage that we're doing. Let's hit the Cultist directly at least once. Distraction adds a random skill to our hand. Let's play Escape's plan next. So are we going to play eight more cards this turn? You know, we might actually play eight more cards this turn. Let's... Let's think about whether we're going to defeat the Cultist with the cards that we play, with Thousand Cuts. Ooh, Distraction gave us Tactician. That's pretty good because we've got Calculated Gamble in our hand. Alright, so now I think we play Calculated Gamble. This is a time that we could play Setup in order to draw one of these cards, like Thousand Cuts, and play it, but we don't really need that. We don't really need that. So let's just discard, draw more cards. Bandage up gives us another card. Outmaneuver gives us energy next turn, and then Noxious Fumes kills the Cultist. Great. We lost a lot of apparitions, but you can kind of clearly see this battle is over. Discard to defend, win with the Predator. Alright, a Gambler's Brew. Very good potion. Very good potion. Discard any number of cards, then draw that many. Allows you to change up your hand a lot. Allows you to kind of force that you play cards you want to play early when you want to play them early. That is definitely better than a skill potion. Skewer could be really good if we had lots of energy. We kind of don't have lots of energy. We have lots of cards, not lots of energy. So Skewer is not what we're looking for. I think we skip all of these. The three slavers. This is the Taskmaster and the two slavers. So this battle can be a very difficult elite battle. The elite battles in Act 2 are multi-enemy fights. They can be very difficult. This one I think will be fine in, but it's more dangerous than most that we would encounter. Let's play the escape plan first. See what it draws. It drew a backflip. Fine. Let's play the bandage up next. It drew a blur. Fine. So now we play our three shivs. In this battle, I almost always go for the right slaver first. This one, the, the blue slaver, weakens you. The taskmaster adds wounds to your deck. And the, the red slaver does two things. One, prevents you to, from playing attacks. And two, gives you vulnerable. Both of those are really bad when you have multiple enemies. So the red slaver tends to be the worst one at the beginning. So almost always defeat the Red Slaver first. So, Shiv the Red Slaver. Ooh, after image. Whenever we play a card, gain one block. That is amazing when we're playing lots of cards. So when we play this Shiv, we gain one block. When we play this Deflect, we gain an extra block. I am going to play the Deflect, I think. Are we going to play the Piercing Whale? Piercing Whale, all enemies deal 6 less damage this turn. So 
That blocks for kind of a lot, but I don't know if we need that much block because we're, we're getting so much off of after image. Still, this is probably the turn to play it, so let's play it. And then I, I'm still playing the deflect because I want to make space in my hand for blade dance. So here's the time where we decide, are we playing Calculated Gamble? Or are we playing Blur? Because the Blur keeps our block. I think we're playing Blur and not Calculated Gamble. So we've got a bunch of block. We haven't done a lot of damage yet. We. So this this effect right here, this prevents us from playing from playing attacks next turn. It'd be nice if that didn't hit us, but in order for it to not hit us, we have to defeat that one. Which is unlikely. Do we want to play the apparitions? We're probably drawing an apparition next turn. I think what we do is we play the Caltrops, we discard the Apparitions so that we have them in a future turn, and we play this Accuracy and this Leg Sweep. So next turn we can't deal damage. That's not good for us. We can't play an attack this turn. We can play Thousand Cuts, which does deal damage. And then Apparition means that we are not taking damage. And then, really, I guess we play Crippling Cloud or Noxious Fumes. Crippling Cloud seems pretty nuts. We are getting wounds in our deck every turn, by the way, which is going to make the next play through our deck much worse. But again, Apparitions are saving us a lot here. Since we have so many Apparitions, we can just continue to play the Apparitions and save our life energy. So if we play Masterful Stab here, actually we don't need to do that because the Thousand Cuts will kill the Red Slaver. So let's focus on another one. Let's focus on the Taskmaster next. Stop those wounds from coming into our deck. And at this point... I think we just win this turn. Yes, alright, we, we win this turn. We'll win with poison, because I like winning with poison. A lantern, excellent, excellent relic. Especially with the silent who tends to start with more cards in the first turn. Every first turn you get an extra energy. It's only the first turn, but the first turn is when you most need that extra energy. Very nice relic. I think we want the fire potion more than we want this weak potion. And here we are, Storm of Steel. Storm of Steel is not often an amazing card, but when you have Dead Branch, it discards your entire hand gives you a bunch of damage, and then gives you a new hand to play with. So Storm of Steel can be very strong with Dead Branch. Also, because of Ink Bottle, Storm of Steel will call us, cause us to, to cause the Ink Bottle to draw cards just more often. So we're taking Storm of Steel. It can be an amazing card with these relics. The Snake Plant. Snake Plant can be a dangerous one, Snake Plant deals 24 damage at a time, basically. And 24 damage this at this point in the game it is a lot to deal with in a single turn. The Apparitions do help us, of course. Also, we're going to play a thousand cuts in accuracy, and the Snake Plant is not dealing us damage this turn. The Malleable is quite bad if you're dealing small bits of damage, because the snake plant just continues to gain block. It also means this 80 health is a lot more than 80 health. And Gale, welcome to the stream. 
we do have kind of a Shiv deck going. We have, we kind of have a Dead Branch deck going, to be honest. It's more of a Dead Branch deck than it is a Shiv deck. But the Shivs are fueling the Dead Branch. That Sneaky Strike is not playable right now, by the way. I would love to be able to play it, but we can't. We did draw another Blade Dance, but we don't really have space in our hand. We could play the Deflect, or we could just play the Glass Knife, which does more damage with one hit. I think we'll play the Glass Knife. Alright, we've done more than half damage on the first turn. It is our best turn, and we are weakened this turn, but still. Let's start with the... Actually, when we have Thousand Cuts, it's better to not attack first because the Malleable is not affected by the Thousand Cuts damage. So you want to deal that damage before the enemy starts gaining block. So we're going to play Adrenaline first. Bandage up, because why not? We happen to have a Wraith form in our hand, which is a way to block, but we can also block with a Leg Sweep. I mean, Wraith Form is a way to block that blocks for a couple turns, which is all the turns that we need to win. So let's play Wraith, Wraith Form and one Defend. That blocks fully. And then Masterful Stab, and of course we end the turn with Unload. When you have Unload, you usually want to end your turn with it, because it discards all of the cards in your hand. Alright. If we play Caltrops first, then it gets two damage, which means the strike wins. I I really like Gail's comment that dead branches can be sharpened into shivs. <laughs> Speaking of shivs, the cunning potion adds three shivs to your hand. That, in our deck, is probably better than Fire Potion, except for the fact that we might not have room in our hand. But if we, if we don't have room in our hand, we probably want the Cunning Potion instead. The fact that we're not using our potions is kind of just an indication of how well we're doing. And again, I don't think we want any of these cards. The Flying Knee is not terrible. But at this point, we're doing so much damage with Shivs that do we really need something like Flying Knee? It tends to be a zero cost card though, because next turn it gains an energy. I don't know, we haven't, haven't added much attack to our deck at all. I might just want, I might just want one attack card <laughs> that doesn't exhaust itself and is upgraded. Let's, let's take one. It might be the only one that we take, though. Alright, do we Toke or do we Smith? The real question is, are there any really good ones to Smith? Concentrate is good to Smith. Noxious Fumes is really good to Smith. The, the Storm of Steel, by the way, Smithing it get, makes those shivs upgraded. Which, which is good. The Apparitions are amazing for smithing, however, it's not as important with what we have going. I think I might rather toke a Defend, honestly. Let's toke a Defend. And then would I rather fight a battle or get a question mark? I think I'd rather have a question mark right now. <laughs> the the question mark was a merchant. How about that? Well, there is a footwork, which is a classic silent card. A classic silent card that you usually want. However, do we want it? That's a harder question. With as much intangible as we have, I don't know how much a footwork really does for us. It does something. 
but I don't know if it's the most important card, honestly. On the other hand, card removal service is amazing, and we probably want that. We always want to remove cards. The thing is, you usually want to add footworks in your deck. Why don't I want to add a footwork? Because we have five intangible targets. That's why. Let's not do it. Let's take card remove. Let's remove a strike this time. And do we want another blade dance? We only have one blade dance. We could take another blade dance. Sure, you know what? I would take another blade dance. The thing that I really want in this deck now is the power that adds one block every time you play a card. That's what we really want. All right, and we removed another card, so we're going to Smith this time. The other thing I could do is recall. We could recall now instead of later. Maybe we do that because it means that I could take more cards that I might want to Smith. We've got to recall at some point, but I think I'm going to Smith an apparition. One apparition sticks around. Does not need to be discarded to stick around. All right, the Bronze Automaton. Bronze Automaton could honestly kill us. It is very possible for us to die here. What will cause us to die or not is whether we have an apparition at the right time, or if we just win before that because we do so much damage. Both things are possible. Let's play Thousand Cuts first. It's a great thing to start with. Let's play our Escape Plan. I think our Bandage Up is quite bad. Let's play that. We got a Backstab. Excellent. We can deal some damage. Crippling Cloud would remove two of the artifact charges. Is that worth it compared to just Shiv, 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 Storm of Steel, a whole bunch of Shivs, and then whatever we get from those? I think I'd rather see what we get from those. So, Shiv, Shiv we got another Storm of Steel, <laughs> and another Thousand Cuts. All right, I'll take another Thousand Cuts. So now we're playing Storm of Steel, and that preserved that one, that one apparition that we had in our hand, by the way. We got an Eviscerate, cost less for each card discarded this turn. We discarded a bunch of cards, so that's zero cost. All right, and granted, we did do we did do 114 damage on the first turn. We could, we even, by the way, this profile just got the ninja achievement. <laughs> because I had never played 10 shivs in a single turn before. All right. The only reason to play Calculated Gamble right now is the hope to draw Adrenaline or con Concentrate. I think that's not worth it. Let's end our turn. We do want to play Accuracy. We certainly want to play Adrenaline. Let's start with Adrenaline. That gives us more information. And then we drew another Blade Dance. Perfect time to play ac Accuracy. And the Blade Dance. So at this point, I'm wondering whether we ever target the the orbs on the left and right, or if we just let them die from our three damage every time we play a card. I think we let them die and just focus on the boss. So we did get an apparition this turn. I am thinking that we play that apparition. We also got a dodge and roll which means we've got block for next turn, too. Let's play this Apparition. And then dodge and roll. 
The well-laid plans at the end of our turn retain up to one card. That means we can basically keep this apparition around until we need it. It's kind of the perfect thing for this battle. It just means we can't play Calculated Gamble. And that's unfortunate, but, you know, I think it's worth it. We also can't play Unload in that circumstance. Because we don't want to discard our one Apparition. Granted, there are two more in the deck, but still. We have a way to basically guaranteed win this battle by bringing this Apparition forward every turn. So we're going to do that. Because it guarantees that we win the battle. Start with Blade Dance. Shiv the boss a few times. We got an Apparition. Perfect. Or, uh, I meant at After Image. We got an After Image. Perfect. That's the card that I really want to have in our deck. After Image. And do we have to play a block card? We do. We have to play Deflect. We could play Acrobatics and discard this Apparition, but we're likely to draw another Apparition. Still going to do it. We drew a Concentrate too. That's the main reason I wanted to do that. So Concentrate, we discard Apparition, Strike, Defend. Well, Leg Sweep, Defend. And then we've got more energy. So let's play Noxious Fumes, Poison Stab, and Strike. And then we get to keep this Apparition forward. I don't think we're ever going to need to play it, because I think we're going to win quite handily. Bleshets probably gets better after we play Blade Dance. Even though Blade Dance is a skill, we're likely to get some skills out of this. And we did. Let's play another Blade Dance. And we win. All right. So we won before we needed to play our Apparition, or our, yes, our Apparition. Our deck is strong. That's, that's basically what's happening. It's been a while since we've taken damage because our deck is just strong. Is the Fear Potion better than the Cunning Potion? I kind of want to keep the Cunning Potion around. I like having another Adrenaline. You can see how good the Adrenaline that we have has been. So I would not mind another. Corpse Explosion can be really good in multi-enemy fights. Since we're past Act 2, I don't really care as much about multi-enemy fights. Act 2 is really the one where Corpse Explosion shines the most. That said, it has a couple other places that it shines, such as the Donu Deka third act boss battle. However, I don't think we need it. I think the adrenaline is very nice. I do not fear the time eater. <laughs> I We might get time eater, but I do not fear time eater. One of the things about time eater, it restricts you to playing 12 cards, but if you have a deck that regularly plays 12 cards a turn, then it's so much better than if you have a deck that wants to play like 10 cards a turn. Since we can pretty regularly play 12 cards, it's not going to affect us as much as it could have. But we'll see if we get there. Sneko Eye could be terrible. So drawing two additional cards at the start of your turn, start each combat confused. This is often a very, very good boss relic to take. It makes it so that cards that cost two are are much are potentially lower cost they have an average cost of less than they normally cost cards that cost zero are particularly hit by this one the draw two extra is the big thing here the problem is we don't need to draw two extra drawing two extra cards is not something that really helps our deck that much for one on turn one we already draw 10 cards the max you can have in your hand so sneko eye is often very good not so great here. Calling Bell. Upon the pickup, you obtain a curse and three relics. Those relics will be a common, uncommon, and rare relic. 
This one can be quite good. The curse can be quite bad. Uh, I, I'm very happy taking Calling Bell most of the time that we're taking Calling Bell. It's a pretty nice boss relic to find. It just doesn't give you energy, which often with boss battles, you want to get one that gives you energy. And as Prozian mentions, we've got the Hovering Kite, which I will take. The Hovering Kite, the first time you discard a card each turn, gain one energy. With the Silent, this often means that you gain one energy every turn, which is extremely strong. It's stronger than Slaver's Collar, which only gives you one energy every turn for boss and elite battles. This one can give you one en energy every turn in every battle, as long as you discard a card every turn, which, as you've seen, our deck quite frequently does. So this one can be an extremely strong relic it's going to be one for us in this run. Hey, we got the time eater. There we go. <laughs> we called it. <laughs> All right, so we get to go up against the time eater. <laughs> so time eater is particularly painful for shiv decks. Shiv decks are decks that tend to play lots of low value cards. So a shiv, you know, does four damage, costs zero. The time eater ends your turn after every 12 cards you play and gains strength. So the time eater can be extremely bad if you're playing a lot of low value cards where the value of your deck comes from how many cards you play, not how good the cards are. For us, Shiv cards are much, much better because we have accuracy. Accuracy very much changes the math there for Time Eater. However, cards like Deflect and cards like our Bandage Up, which honestly is not doing much for us, and cards like Escape Plan are very bad cards against the Time Eater. So we've got some, we've got some problems in our deck for the Time Eater fight. Luckily, we've got five apparitions. And like I said, the Time Eater is easier to fight if you can regularly play 12 cards than if, you're, if your deck wants to play 9 or 10 a turn. Because if you play 9 or 10 a turn, you can only do that every other turn. It's kind of like, it's kind of like you've been 50% taken off, where you can play 6 cards a turn rather than 9 or 10. So... The Time Eater is a problem. It is a problem, but I'm not afraid. We do want to fight. We do want to go to Act 4. That means going to this Burning Elite, at minimum. I see a lot of Elite battles that we can go into. This one, this one, and this one. And we are quite good in Elite battles. Also, we could change that to this one if we wanted. They're, they're both kind of the same. We can fight four elites in this act, and that would be quite good. I want to go to the later shop. So that's one of these shops. So the only question is, how many normal enemies do I want? I like events, in, in Act 3 especially. So we're going to go this path. All right, we fight the shapes. The shapes can be dangerous if you are dealing lots of physical damage, lots of damage directly with attack cards because the spikers can be bad. The silent has kind of a way around that. The silent can use poison to kill to kill the spikers. We don't have that much poison in our deck, but what we do has is have is apparitions. Apparitions reduce all damage. See that capitalized all? Reduce all damage taken and HP lost to one. That includes from the spikers. So the spiker damage is going to be re reduced to one every time we take it. That's quite significant. So what do we want to do here? I think that we play survivor to discard one of these cards. I think we want to play Crippling Cloud. Let's start there. Crippling Cloud gives us a burst. 
We could burst the apparition, get intangible for next turn too. Then we couldn't play Storm of Steel though. We have apparitions in the deck. I'm going to play the apparition. We're going to discard the burst. Oh right, the crippling the the kite, the hovering kite that we just got gave us an extra energy. Of course it did. Now, we've got one energy left. We're going to play Storm of Steel. And might as well hit these while we're intangible. We got Die, Die, Die. Would I rather play Die, Die, Die than Storm of Steel? No. So. We've got to be careful that we don't actually take damage here. So I can do one more. I can do actually one more and we still won't take damage. All right. But I can't backstab that one or that one, or we would take one damage, which I don't want to take. Ooh, the backstab turned into a backstab. <laughs> Very nice. All right, let's start with escape plan. This potentially gives us block. Noxious fumes is one of the ways to what am I trying to say? Noxious Fumes is one of the ways to defeat these without doing physical damage. And since we don't have Intangible this time, there's not much we can do to prevent the damage from the spikes, except for the Defend. So we're going to Defend and Deflect and Shiv. That kills that one effectively. Also, we ended up drawing a Backflip, which means we'll have enough block to hit this one too. And we ended up drawing Concentrate, so we can play that. End up playing another backflip, and be able to play this Shiv too. And we could play that Glass Knife, because you know what? We would take damage, but we would heal it, right? Let's see here. If we play the Glass Knife, we would take 12 damage. Okay, that, that's a little bit much. Let's play the Apparition instead, and then we get to play the Glass Knife. And of course, Bandage up to see what we get. All right. We have a whole bunch of Apparitions, which makes the, the damage from this not very significant. Let's play all those Apparitions. All right, Adrenaline gives us more cards. The <laughs> Thousand Cuts is great. Thousand Cuts means that we're going to kill this one without dealing attack damage to it. We've got two Reflexes in our hand, so if we discard those, we draw two more cards. Escape Plan draws us a card. Let's see here. We've got, we've got Intangible, so we can do this and not take damage. And I guess we play our Blade Dance. And by the way, something that you may not know if you don't frequently draw too many cards in your hand, if you have a card that would be created from a card in your hand, but you don't have space for it, it goes directly to your discard pile. So we actually have a Shiv in our discard pile because we created a card from our hand that that didn't fit in our hand. If you try to draw too many cards from your deck, they just stay in your deck. Anyway, let's win with Poison. All right, Liquid Memories can be a very good card. It's almost better than the Cunning Potion because we could often choose to play to play Blade Dance if we wanted to. I think for that reason, I'm finally going to get rid of the Cunning Potion. Terror can be amazing. Apply 99 Vulnerable, that basically just means all of your attacks for the rest of the battle deal 50% more. It's quite good. Let's take a Terror. 
It was the only non-upgraded card there, however. Match and keep. All right. 12 cards, five tries, no do-overs. So, this game, there's, there's no, there's no strategy for how you start this one. There's no benefit to picking randomly from the pile. So most of the time when you see people play this, they'll pick the first two cards because there's no value in clicking the center cards. They're all random. So first two, dagger throw and neutralize. We do not want either of those in our deck. The dagger throw is fine, but we don't really want either of those. This is a dagger throw. We could take a dagger throw right now, but like I said, we don't really want it, so we're not going to take it. Nightmare. Now, Nightmare is something that I do want. So if we find another Nightmare, we're going to take that one. I would not mind another Concentrate, too. We do not want Regret, however. So, if this is a, a Concentrate or a Nightmare, we can take that. We got a Nightmare. Let's take it. Wonderful. And we got a Concentrate. How about that? We got two cards out of match and keep. By the way, my average is probably getting one card, if I happen to want one of the cards. Prozion said he almost always gets nothing, <laughs> or he almost always tries to get nothing. Right. That That's a difference. All right. The Darklings. The Darklings, they they seem bad when you first fight them, but honestly, of the Act 3 normal battles, they are probably the easiest. It's just a damage check. Basically, you have to be able to do enough damage to kill them, even when they're sometimes reviving. We have no problem with dealing damage in our deck. Therefore, we will not have a problem here. However, it's basically just a damage check. For the most part, you want to attack the left or the right one. I wonder if it tells you that here. Yes. So, the middle Darkling cannot chomp. So, that's the thing I'm trying to say. The chomp is a 9 times 2 whereas the nip is just some amount of damage. So, the chomp is a much more dangerous thing, and the middle Darkling cannot do it. So you want to focus on the left or the right Darkling first. I'm going to focus on the right one. Ho oh, ho, we got Thousand Cuts. That's perfect. All right, Thousand Cuts. What else do we have? So we've got a Blade Dance in our hand. We also have Concentrate. We probably want to play the Concentrate next. It's just a matter of what we discard. We certainly don't need the Noxious Fumes or the Outmaneuver. Do we want the Leg Sweep? We might want the Leg Sweep, so I'm going to keep it. All right. Do we just win? Oh my gosh, we got a choke. Whenever we play a card this turn, the enemy that we play the choke on loses three health. All right, so I think we might win this one or come very close to winning this one first turn. We got a blade dance. All right, we might win this one first turn. <laughs> if we play five more cards, the right Darkling dies. So now we're focusing on the middle one because the other two are effectively dead. All right. We could play Calculated Gamble. I think we play that after we play Flying Knee. And actually Sucker Punch wins. All right, we just won that one first turn. No problem. Ultis Potion. Do I want that more than something else that we have? The Cultist Potion is good against bosses. I don't know. It is very good, granted. 
But do we want it more than Liquid Memories, which is the one I'm thinking of? Sure, we want it more than Liquid Memories. It's good against bosses. Liquid Memories is good against all things. So Sneaky Strike is another way to gain, to work with the fact that we discard cards. It gains energy if you've discarded a card. Dagger Throw Upgraded deals a fair amount of damage, and we always draw one, discard one, which is pretty nice. I think we take the Sneaky Strike. Partially I'm taking a Sneaky Strike because of Time Eater, because Time Eater, you want to do as much damage with each of your plays, each of your attack plays that you're doing, and Sneaky Strike does a good amount of damage. All right. The Spire Growth. Spire Growth... Spire Growth is an interesting one. I never know what to think of Spire Growth. Right now it's dealing 18 damage, but what it does is it adds an effect to you that deals you 10 damage at the end of every turn. So once it does that, you effectively get 10 more damage from the Spire Growth every turn, and that can be a lot. But the Spire Growth only has 190 health. Only 190, but still. 190 is not that bad this late into the game. So you can usually kill it before you get too much damage. It just does do a fair amount of damage. I don't know. I usually don't know what to think of it. Let's play an Apparition at the beginning, I think. Sure, Apparition at the beginning. Then we play our Shivs. Probably should have played Adrenaline first. We need space in our hand, though. How do we make space in our hand? We've got a couple ways. Oh, we got a deflect. Excellent. So that blocks the one damage. We got another deflect, which we can get rid of. I want to play Concentrate next. We don't need the Leg Sweep. We don't need the Dash. And we don't need the Riddle with Holes. All right, now we can play Adrenaline. I kept the outmaneuver. Wow, we got after image too. All right, we're just doing really well. I kept the outmaneuver because I figured we would play it and do more damage next turn. But I also kind of think we might be doing a lot of damage this turn. Sneaky Strike adds two more energy, so it costs nothing. We could use the Nightmare. I don't think we need it in this battle. I think what we do this time is we play the Calculated Gamble that exhausts itself. That's going to trigger Reflex and the Dead Branch, meaning that, meaning that we'll have 10 more cards in our hand again. And we get Sneaky Strike. The escape plan is nice. The Storm of Steel... Storm of Steel gives us a lot more cards. Would we rather play Concentrate first? I don't think we would. Let's play Storm of Steel. We got a Terror. Fine. Let's play Terror as well. A Masterful Stab costs zero. That's great. And then what do we do? It's our final turn. We play all out attack. That's the one that does the most damage. And you know what? It survived. It survived the first turn. And it's going to survive this turn too, because we didn't get anything that draws us a card. Except for this apparition, which drew us a backflip. <laughs> Alright. Adrenaline draws us some cards. Playing that Apparition was really good. <laughs> Alright, let's play Accuracy. I meant to play the Accuracy. Oh well. We would have won if I had played Accuracy. Oh, we... we... 
still win because we had a backstab inside of a backstab. <laughs> the infinite backstab combo. Alright. I don't know. Sometimes the deck is just good. As much as I wouldn't mind a slice, I don't really want it. The zero cost means that it's easy to play. But I don't think we want a slice. We basically want to remove cards more than we want to add cards. Yeah, let's let's not take the slice. So not only did we get backstab into backstab, but we also got that twice this run so far, which is kind of incredible. We cannot afford the Prismatic Shard, unfortunately. Everybody likes to see the Prismatic Shard. It's actually not a very good purchase, but it's a very fun purchase. We don't really need another Noxious Fumes. One Noxious Fumes is enough. We certainly don't need potions. So the, the point is, do we play card removal service, or do we save our money for a future shop? I think we do card remove service. Because removing cards is quite valuable. I really don't want this strike. Let's remove a strike. I would also be happy with removing another defend. The Reptomancer. The Reptomancer fight, you really need to take care of the daggers. She puts out lots of daggers. The daggers do a ton of damage if you leave them alive. So you need to take out the daggers. So right now, if we play Escape Plan, we draw a card and the Ink Bottle would cause us to draw another card. So we don't want to play Escape Plan first. We want to play something that actually goes away, which is going to be Neutralize. I'm going to play the Neutralize here. Then we can play the Escape Plan. And we drew Concentrate. Interesting. We have a bunch of energy. Let's see what the shivs give us. We got an accuracy. Wonderful. That makes it so that these two shivs kill this dagger. We got an eviscerate, which will be free once we play concentrate. I think we want tools of a trade. At the start of your turn, draw one card and discard one turn. Uh, one card. That's really good when you've got hovering kite. Guarantees that you get the extra energy every turn. I think we play... Let's play the Tools of a Trade. Let's not bother to play... Survivor... These two Apparitions. And then we can play the Eviscerate for free. Then what? Leg Sweep the boss to keep the boss weak forever. Play Noxious Fumes, which draws us a card, draws us Adrenaline. Now we've got Thousand Cuts. This is not the one that's normally in our deck. This is an extra Thousand Cuts. And then we don't really care to play the Apparition, so let's just play the Concentrate and discard it. You can play Concentrate when you don't have enough cards in your hand to discard. Usually doesn't do much, but that time it kept an, an Apparition on our deck. Having an Apparition in your deck, often quite good. Let's discard an Apparition. That leaves that, that one in our deck. And let's play one. Adrenaline. And we got our Thousand Cuts. There we go. Now we just want to play cards. So Shiv, give us some cards to play. We really don't need to hit the dagger because the three damage every card that we play will kill that dagger. We got another accuracy. Perfect. And I think we play Calculated Gamble. Of these cards, the nine damage to the Reptomancer is probably not as good as something else we could play, such as Blade Dance. Blade Dance, the shivs do 14 damage every shiv. 
And we got a masterful stab out of one. All right, I'm going to play this Malaise. Malaise is a good card. We don't really need it in this battle. Playing it means that we get the three damage from the thousand cuts, and it exhausts, meaning that we get another card. But otherwise, it had no effect. Perzion made a meme. Well, there there is my Discord. You can share it on my Discord. There are a lot of ways to win this turn. Let's pick one of them. <laughs> so, we play Terror, we play Sneaky Strike, and we play Die Die Die. There we go. Smiling Mask. The Merchant's Card Removal Service now always costs 50 gold. It's unfortunate to get, a, get this this late in the run, but it does affect us for Act Four, which we are going to go to. Speed Potion, I don't think we need. Oh. I'm responding to Prozion here. I, I think that you're just missing the ability to do that in my Discord, but I'll give you that. After this, after this run, I'll give you the ability to do that. Do we want another Sneaky Strike or a Heal Hook? So the Sneaky Strike... I did add a Sneaky Strike recently. We could add another one. We could add another Sneaky Strike. If we add another one, it is the last one. Definitely. We don't want that many. The Heal Hook, we do add Weakness, but... Probably not enough to make the heel hook a worthwhile pick. So I think I'm going to take the sneaky strike, but I'm, I feel like we might be adding too many cards that don't do that much. You know, 16 damage, and 16 damage that's probably free to play sounds really good. But actually, it doesn't do that much. We want things that draw cards and discard cards and exhaust cards. Those do a lot for us. I think this is the time that I'm going to click the recall button because you have to do it at some point and we might in in one potential future we might want to rest at both of those other fires. So let's click the recall this time. Also, I frequently forget if I if I decide to do recall on the very last fire. I have often forgot to do it, and not gone to Act 4 because I've just forgotten. I like to avoid forgetting. We got a Storm of Steel in our first hand against the Nemesis. That means we can do a lot. I probably want to play both these Apparitions so that next turn we are intangible for the Nemesis. Let's start there. We could play Concentrate, because we are going to draw a card with Ink Bottle, so might as well Concentrate. And that really means that we got a Bullet Time. Bullet Time doesn't do anything with the cards that we have in our hand, unfortunately. Prozion asks a good question. Do you tend to recall later in the game or early? I can see why later would be beneficial since it's good to smith, but, but some other times it can be hard to find a good spot later on. So, I almost always do it later. I almost always do the recall in Act 3. And that's for the simple reason that by the time you get to Act 3, if your deck is going to be strong enough to win Act 4, you probably don't have that much need to rest in Act 3, or upgrade in Act 3. The earlier that you recall, the earlier that you put yourself in Dire Straits. So, if you put, if you do an upgrade, if you do an upgrade early, that upgrade is going to help you 
more. Doing a recall early does not help you more. So I tend to do the recalls in Act 3. If you watch some of the pros, some of the best players at this game, they almost always do the recall on the very last fire. So based on the pros, I assume that I'm doing the I'm doing the most logical choice. And I think that the most the most what am I trying to say? The most win rate. The most win rate is going to come recalling on the the last fire or the second to last fire. So, that's my opinion. Going back to this battle, I think we shiv shiv shiv. Oh, the choke. I have to do the choke before I do the storm of steel. Yep, we do choke before we do storm of steel, but we don't do neutralize. The neutralize does almost nothing compared to what the storm of steel does. We got terror. I'm happy to play a terror. Upgrades all of the shivs. And we can even blur for next turn, or we could play a finisher. <laughs> this is great. Finisher, we, t we played 14 attacks this turn. Let's just do 9 damage 14 times. Alright, we, we beat the Nemesis on turn 1. Feels good. Maw Bank, not, this gr not that great this late, but you know it does something. And we certainly don't need an Explosive Potion. Ho-ho, Tactician. Oh man, we probably want a Tactician. We probably want a Tactician. It, it adds a lot of energy, which we can definitely use. I'm worried that we're adding too many cards. But that one is strong. Alright, if we're going into Act 4, we have to choose the Sapphire Key here. Take the Frozen Egg, it's kind of late to take this anyway. Take the Sapphire Key. And we'll get our last key from this Fiery Elite. The Giant Head. The Giant Head... The Giant Head has the slow ability, which means it takes more damage the more cards we play, which is perfect. That is perfect for the deck that we have, let me tell you. We like that the Giant Head has slow. We could play Nightmare here. Nightmare, the card, we choose a card, next turn we add three copies of that card to our hand. We could Nightmare to get Blade Dance, which would be absurd next turn. I think we do that. Nightmare the Blade Dance, we're going to get three of those next turn. We still get to play it this turn too, by the way. So now, do we play the Concentrate? I think we do. Concentrate, Acrobatics, Defend, Apparition. Nightmare does work with Accuracy. Gale asks, does Nightmare work with Accuracy or would that be Overkill? It does work with Accuracy. I tend to Nightmare something like Blade Dance or... What's the other card in our deck? Adrenaline? I tend to Nightmare the those cards, but Nightmaring a power can be quite strong because you can Nightmare the power, then play that power multiple times. It's really good for long battles. This is not a long battle. <laughs> this battle is not a long battle, so I didn't consider it. But I probably should have. We could Nightmare something else too. We could Nightmare a Shiv. I'm going to consider doing that. But we're going to play our other Shivs first. Let's Nightmare a Shiv. Nightmare a Shiv. We're going to have way too many cards in our next turn, by the way. That's the biggest problem with what we've done. <laughs> Alright, so, 
A thousand cuts, perfect. <laughs> Alright, so what are we doing here? I guess we should probably play Apparition. But we have so many blade dances to play. Let's play Adrenaline. There's never going to be a good time to play Adrenaline. Let's play it. Alright. We have a calculated gamble. Well, let's play all these shivs. We got a finisher. <laughs> the problem is we don't have space in our hand. We, we just don't have space in our hand. I called this as the problem, but it ends up being a true problem. Let's play the Apparition. We do want to play one of those. Let's play the Dash. That makes space in our hand. And then we can play Calculated Gamble. That gets us an energy, by the way, from the Hovering Kite. And then what? Probably Blade Dance. So we can play more shivs. We also want to play this other adrenaline. And then, what else are we playing? I think we play Apparition. And then we play Prepared, I guess. And then we play all of our shivs and our Neutralize. All right. It was unfortunate that we didn't play the the finisher. However, I think we're doing just fine. Bandage up first. We can play well laid plans, or we could just play Storm of Steel. I think we just play Storm of Steel. That gets us more shivs. And more other stuff that we can play. We got another Storm of Steel. Storm of Steel into Storm of Steel is perfect. And we got a finisher. Let's play a backflip. And finisher. And then Storm of Steel. We got a, a terror as well. Alright. Each of the shivs are now doing 30 damage. We won on turn three. Pretty good for an enemy that has 500 health. Ceramic Fish. One of my least favorite relics, because it seems like it might be good and it normally does almost nothing. Gambler's Brew. I really like Gambler's Brew. Do I like it more than Cultist Potion? I think I do. Gambler's Brew can get us out of a out of a bad situation. And I think that's more important than the Cultist Potion. <laughs> we do not want Infinite Blades. <laughs> the Infinite Blades looks really good, but we don't actually want an extra shiv every turn. Not not what we need. As much as it would be fun, it's not actually what we need. We got another shop. <laughs> the shop after the Maw Bank. The worst. I mean, all oh, the card remove service is only 50. Oh, I forgot about that. I think we we use the card remove service and we also get to use it in Act 4. Wonderful. How much do I want to remove a defend from my deck? I do want to. Let's remove one. I might not want to remove the next one, though. We got a nemesis that has more health. The first nemesis died on turn one. Let's see how this one does. Start with... Terror? Let's use Adrenaline. We can play an Apparition. We probably will. Let's play the Apparition. Neutralize. Escape Plan. And then we play... Let's 
play the Flying Knee to make space so that we can play Blade Dance. We could play that Slice or we could turn it into a Shiv with Storm of Steel. I think we'd rather turn it into a Shiv. All right. So this nemesis that had extra health lasted just as long as the first one. One turn. The boot probably does nothing. It technically helps our shivs, but only when the shivs don't deal that much damage. And they will deal damage. It might affect the first shivs that we play by one. Emerald Key, we needed that. Power Potion. Do we need the Power Potion more than the Energy Potion? Sure. We seem to have a lot of energy. Ooh, Blur or Leg Sweep? I'm really considering these. The problem is, as much as the Apparitions are good, we are going to have to survive longer against the heart. And Blur or Leg Sweep is a way to do that. Especially Blur. Let's take a Blur. And then do we Smith or Toke? It's a, it's a common question for me. Do I Smith or do I Toke? Toking the Terror would make it cost zero. Toking the Nightmare would make it cost two. Toking the Apparitions are always good. Toking the Adrenaline gives me an extra energy. You know, there's a lot of things that we could toke that would give us energy, basically. I think I want an Adrenaline toke. Or, not toked, upgraded. I think I want an Adrenaline upgraded. Because then it makes it a stronger target for Nightmare. Let's smith one Adrenaline. <clears throat> and then, move on. The Sensory Stone. I'm very happy to spend health here. It might seem very foolish when you have 35 health to spend 10 of it. But you know, I think it's worth it. We do gain health from our, our card, our bandage up. So it's kind of like spending 6 health. When I, when, oh, so. When I take the sensory stone. You can press the skip button. It doesn't actually skip. Until you, until you actually skip and move on to the next floor. So you can look at all of the cards before you decide. We probably don't want Master of Strategy in this run, but it's usually a good one. We might still want it. It draws a lot of cards. We don't want Madness. We don't really care for violence. Panache actually does kind of a lot. I want to take the Panache. So I think we're going to take Panache. I don't think I want any of these. And we could use another bandage up. It, it does something, it just doesn't do much. I think the Master of Strategy is just better than another Bandage Up. So let's take Master of Strategy. All right. And now we Smith or we Toke. Same question as before. I think we Smith an, an Apparition. I think Apparitions are the main way that we survive the heart battle. So let's Smith Apparitions. And move on. The Time Eater fight. We do have an Apparition. Apparition is good to see. We could Nightmare the Apparition. 
By the way, that's one way to deal with this battle, is Nightmare Apparition. We don't currently have a way to discard except Acrobatics, so we probably should play Acrobatics first, because playing Acrobatics gives us an energy, and it makes Sneaky Strike free. I'm thinking about Nightmaring Apparition. The problem with that is we don't get to play Thousand Cuts. And you know I want to play Thousand Cuts. Thousand Cuts essentially does 24 damage a turn. But Nightmare Apparition makes it so that we survive the battle for a long time. Hello Gabriel, welcome to the stream, even if it's just shortly. Let's start with Nightmare Apparition. I think this is very strong for allowing us to win this battle. So let's start there. Now we can play said Apparition. We can no longer Acrobatics and Sneaky Strike after that. That's, that's one of the downsides of doing what we just did. But we do play the Apparition. Ooh, we get Adrenaline. Let's play Adrenaline. We don't get to draw all the cards, granted. And then we do get to play Thousand Cuts. Enrique, welcome to the stream. I just realized that we're taking three damage. Whoops. I forgot to leave... I forgot to leave a... an energy for a block card. Maybe the escape plan will save us. It did. It did save us. Now, we only get to play four cards next turn because we didn't play 12 this turn. But I'd rather not play another escape plan because then we would not get to play the four cards next turn. So we play four cards next turn. Power Potion I am saving for Act 4. I don't think we really need the Power Potion in this battle, especially with tons of apparitions. So, step one we play Apparition. Step two, we play Deflect. Now we're taking no damage. We could play more Apparitions, but we can only play two more cards. So if we can only play two more cards, I'd rather put the damage in, save the Apparitions for a later turn. We do have two more Apparitions in the deck. Yeah, we've got two more in the deck. We should be fine. We've got the Gambler's Brew to get out of, a, out of a situation if we get into a situation. Let's use our two dealing some damage. Alright. First part is playing Adrenaline. And we did find a couple Apparitions. We also found an After Image. After Image, not as good in Time Eater as it normally is in other battles, but it works really well with Apparition. So, play a couple of Apparitions. Now what are we doing? We certainly want to play Swar Storm of Steel, but we probably want to play Sneaky Strike first. We get to play eight more cards. Let's Survivor the Tactician. Let's play the Sneaky Strike, and then we play Storm of Steel and the ships. Ooh, the Grand Finale is unfortunate. All right, we have to play the other two cards because we can't play Grand Finale. I was depending on the fact that we could play 12 cards here. The fact that we drew Grand Finale scared me a little bit. <laughs> Yes, uh, Prozion mentions that After Image or Tungsten Rod is extremely good for the heart. It is. I wish we had an After Image in our deck. We only have it when we happened to get it from, from an exhaust trigger. We could play Poison Stab, or we could just play Calculated Gamble here. I probably want to play the Calculated Gamble, 
because we do want to play as many cards as possible. Hey, Master of Strategy. Nice to see you. Do I want to play the Terror now, or leave it for later? The reason to not play it now is that after Time Eater goes below half health, the Time Eater heals itself and removes all debuffs, such as Vulnerable. So if we play it now, we don't get to use it in the second part of the battle. I think I save it for the second part. Play our shivs. Our shivs do a lot of damage now. In Venom, in Venom is quite nice. You know, basically powers are quite nice in the Time Eater fight. We want to play three more cards. We have a Concentrate. Let's Concentrate... Backflip, Escape Plan, Terror, I think. And then we play the other three. Actually, two of them, because the Concentrate was one of the cards. Okay. Do we play... Which, which one do we not play? I think we don't play the Flying Knee. We play all the powers. Ooh. <laughs> we... We play the Panache. Actually, it doesn't do anything this turn. Let's play the Tools of the Trade. We can play Panache next turn. Except that we didn't get to retain a card. Don't know why I was thinking we retained a card. Okay. Choose a card to discard. We're going to discard Crippling Cloud. This is a turn where we really need to get back to one of our apparitions. We have lots of ways to do that. The bullet time is interesting. Let's do backflip first. And acrobatics. We're looking for an apparition. We're still looking for Apparition, so we play Calculated Gamble. Don't really care about the Sneaky Strike as much as we care about not taking the damage. So let's play Calculated Gamble. And Escape Plan. We found an Apparition. It took us a while to find that Apparition. <laughs> Especially considering how many we have in the deck. We've got three more in the deck. But still, we found it, and that's good enough. We play it. We can play four more cards. Let's play... Do I want Shiv just in the deck? Not really. Let's play a Crippling Cloud. See, I don't want to play Storm of Steel. So I guess we will play not Storm of Steel this turn. Great. So the Time Eater is going to heal itself this turn. There's really no reason for us to do anything this turn. I'm thinking about is there is there any reason that we want to do something this turn? The Apparition would be a reason. We've got two more Apparitions in the deck. There's no reason. So we just end this turn. Time Eater heals itself, gets rid of its poison. And now is at half health. We've got Apparitions still. So we play those Apparitions. Sneaky Strike is worth it. Do we play the other cards? Or do we just have a better turn next turn? I think we play the Deadly Poison. We've got one Apparition left in the deck. We've got Gambling Brews to potentially, to potentially draw it. I think that we don't care about Neutralize. Not particularly. Let's save our, our card plays for next turn. There's our Apparition. Great. We also have a Blur that works pretty well with Apparition. We don't care about Expertise. So we play Apparition. We play Blur. 
Maybe we play backflip, and then we play bullet time. We we have so many bullet times in our deck. I don't really see the reason to have so many bullet times in the deck. We'll play this one. That allows us to do terror. Flying knee, we get a quick slash. That's nice. And then we get to play three cards, which unfortunately is going to be exactly these three cards. One of them being Concentrate for nothing. And here we are. We have to deal 110 damage. I think we will have almost no trouble doing that. The Grand Finale doesn't do anything. We can burst this Blade Dance, by the way. I think we start there. Burst the Blade Dance. And then we're doing a lot of damage. Let's see here. The backstab technically does more. Shiv, shiv, shiv. And let's finish with a finisher. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so there's Time Eater. Time Eater down, no potions spent, no damage taken with a shiv deck. That's... that's how you fight Time Eater. <laughs> Let's move on. Act 4. And remember that, you know, one of the reasons why that Time Eater fight went so well is I could depend on my Gambler's Brew. I never actually had to use one, but the fact that I always knew I had the Gambler's Brew made it so that I could make plays more easily and know that I could rely on the Gambler's Brew to get me an Apparition if I didn't happen to draw it. Act 4. Are we smithing or are we toking? There's not a whole lot left to toke. There's the defends, but I kind of want the defends for the final boss. What do we smith? What do we smith? I honestly don't know what I want to smith. I normally would want to smith a blade dance, but we don't often have space in the hand. Maybe we smith something that gives us energy, like Nightmare. Nightmare makes it so that it costs less to play Nightmare. But of course, we could do that with something that doesn't exhaust. Like Concentrate. Discards only two cards. Like... What else gives us energy? Our other Adrenaline. All of the things that give us energy are ones that exhaust themselves. I think let's let's make Nightmare more easily playable. We do get to remove a card here if we want. We don't have the money for any of the relics, but I'll point out that Ornamental Fan would be quite nice to have in this deck. If we could take a Relic, Ornamental Fan would be great. We don't really need another Blade Dance. Sadistic Nature would be okay, but again, can't afford it. So I think, I think we just card remove. <laughs> Gale wants Blade Dance. So card remove is probably going to be a defend. And Gale wants a blade dance. You know what? Gale gets his blade dance. There you go. Blade dance just for you. And into the final gauntlet. These battles can be quite challenging. I think the apparitions make this one not too bad. As long as we guarantee draw our apparitions. But I think that 
this one can be quite bad and will be fine. Let's start with a blur and a deflect. That means we don't need to play either of those apparitions. Let's heal up. We heal our one with our bandage up. Concentrate can discard the apparitions and a defend. And now the question is which one we attack. Because we might be able to kill the left one very quickly. Most of the time I go after the right one because the left one just blocks too often. Let's let's go with the normal. Let's go after the right one. Ooh, panache. Great. Shiv, Shiv, and Shiv. We got a Wraith form for the future. I am going to play this Infinite Blades, even though I didn't put one in my deck. And let's Dagger Throw. We don't need the Wraith form right now. I'd rather have... I'd rather play the Storm of Steel instead of the Slice. I'm thinking about the Leg Sweep, though. Because we get to bring this block forward. Nah, let's let's discard them both. Get two shivs. Predator gives us more draw next turn. And we happen to draw a blade dance. How about that? <laughs> Which gave us a blade dance. How about that? <laughs> Which gave us another infinite blades. Alright. Well I think. I think we're going to have no trouble. For some reason, I believe we will have no trouble. <laughs> All right. What do we play first? Let's play Apparition. The Caltrops. Glass Knife? Glass Knife. And then we can play Adrenaline, because we have space in our hand. Tools of the Trade is fine. Escape Plan is quite good. A couple of Shivs. And at some point we're going to play Calculated Gamble. What do we play before Calculated Gamble? Maybe the Blade Dance? Sure, one Blade Dance. And at this point, I think we don't go after the Spire Spear. I think we go after the Spire Shield. Because we're going to deal 10 damage twice with our Panache. Oh, so I wanted to do Calculated Gamble. I now want to do Storm of Steel. Alright, I think we're winning this turn. For some reason. For some reason, I believe... We win. All right. Win on turn two. No potions used. Feels good. Bronze Scales is excellent against the heart, because the heart deals a times 15 attack, and Bronze Scales means you take 45 damage back. Great. Power Potion. Would we rather have a Power Potion or our Gambler's Brew? I think the Gambler's Brew are our get out of jail free cards, so we really don't want to get rid of them. To some extent, I would like the Deflect, but I'm not going to take it. All right, let's go into the heart. So one of the problems with the heart is the beat of death. Whenever we play a card, we take one damage. That's a problem, because we only have 35 health. Granted, we have Bandage up this turn, so I'm actually going to play Accuracy, take the damage, Shiv, Shiv, and Shiv. Yeah, and the Shiv. And then I'm going to play something that gives me block which is going to be Cloak and Dagger first. 
I think. Yeah, Cloak and Dagger. So now we can play Bandage Up and heal the damage we took. Let's play the other Shiv. The Fletch Etz seems quite good. Also, the Terror is quite good. Let's play the Terror. And then Flesh Etz deals damage for every skill that we have in our hand. We've got a bunch of skills. So let's play that. Time for the bandage up. And then we need more block. I think we do that with dodge and roll. Dodge and roll gives us block next turn too. And then we can play our adrenaline. Ooh, a blur. A blur for next turn sounds good. Have we used our kite this turn? I don't think we have. We have not discarded anything. So we can play Survivor and discard something. The Eviscerate is also shows you that we haven't discarded anything. So let's play the Survivor and discard something. Like... Rippling Cloud? Or Noxious Fumes? Or the Apparition, because we're not playing that this turn. So now we can play Sneaky Strike for free. And I want to play Blur, but I also want to add Weakness to the Heart for next turn. I think I'd rather play Blur, though. If we're going to play Blur, let's play Blade Dance first, because that gives us more things that we'll find out. We got two more leg sweeps? Ridiculous. Alright, let's play the Blur. And first turn, we dealt almost 150 damage. It's pretty nice. So, the heart, by the way, second turn and third turn is going to be one big hit and one small times 15 hit. Both of them are kind of big hits. But since we got the big hit this turn, that means that we're getting the times 15 next turn. We can use the apparition here to make this big hit turn into a one. So we're definitely doing that after we play Thousand Cuts, of course. So now we're not taking damage here. Endless Agony, of course. Let's play Escape Plan. Might give us some block. We can play Apparition right now that will guarantee that we have Intangible next turn. Or we could not play it because we've got a couple of Intangibles that exhaust. But I think let's guarantee that we have the Apparition, the Intangible next turn. All right. We don't get to play those, but we can discard them. Which did deal two damage. So, you know, it was something. I I also completely forgot about the power potion, by the way. So let's play the power potion now. <laughs> so a power potion can give us accuracy. That's fine. We could even nightmare it. The main problem here is that we didn't draw anything that gave us block. Which is a little bit of a problem, because we're taking 15 damage. So I think what we do is we play... We play the Blade Dance. We play the Accuracy. We play the Shivs. And then we got a Deflect, which is nice. And we also got in Venom, which is also nice. And now we can calculate a gamble to hope for block cards. And we got them, of course. So, Blur and Defend, both important here. And then we probably stop here. This Apparition will burn itself, but we're going to take 8 damage as it is, and I don't think that's worth a Gambler's Brew. Actually, let's discard that Apparition. 
Let's discard the Apparition. Take 9 damage, but have another Apparition in our deck. Alright, let's start with Backflip, because that adds block. And then we play Panache and Master of Strategy. So as you can see, the main problem is we just don't have that much source of block in our deck. So we would take damage from the Beat of Death. We can play Calculated Gamble right now to look for block cards. Let's do that. There we go, we got a Deflect. Deflect a couple of Sneaky Strikes. I think we play a Blade Dance. And we're taking damage now, but I think it's worth dealing the damage. Ooh. Doppelganger. Next turn, we draw X additional cards. And gain X energy. Let's play that. So next turn, we're going to get more cards. Do we use this turn to do the Gambler's Brew? I'm going to take some more damage. Take some more damage, and then stop. All right, we've taken damage entirely, not entirely, but basically from Beat of Death. Beat of Death is the source of our damage. The Leg Sweep is perfect. Let's do Leg Sweep. That gives us a lot of block, and then we can play Apparition. Escape plan, sure. We've got a Bane that does a fair amount of damage. We've got Crippling Cloud, which takes out this artifact charge. What do we want to discard with Survivor? Probably... Probably the Crippling Cloud. The Crippling Cloud would add weak which might be important, but probably is not going to be the thing that helps us. Let's discard the Crippling Cloud. Now, what do we do? Ac the Acrobatics. Ooh, we got Blur. All right. I'm going to get rid of Dagger Spray. So we can burst the blur. Burst the blur means that we get the blur effect for two turns. So we get to save our block for two turns, which means this leg sweep adds a bunch of block for next turn. And this eviscerate does a lot of damage. Let's do that. All right, so we've got a lot of block for next turn. A lot being 35 which is not nearly enough. But we do have an Apparition and we have another Blur. So Apparition, the other Blur. Of course we play Accuracy. And then we play Storm of Steel. Our Shivs are doing 27 damage a piece, by the way. And we've got Envenom to add more poison on, great. We still have our Gambler's Brews, by the way. The Gambler's Brews are really there so that we can get out of a pickle, and we just have never gotten into that pickle. The one that I'm so worried about has never happened. So I think that what we do this turn is we play Acrobatics. And then we Blade Dance and win. <laughs> there we go.
you know, of, of heart fights, that one was pretty clean. We are down to 17 health, which seems pretty bad, but considering that we started at 35, that's not bad. And we had two gambler's brews to get out of a pickle, which we just happened to never get into. All right. Felt good. Let's let's look at the deck before we go. So when I started playing this game, I would have never built a deck like this, by the way. So this is a pretty complex deck at the end of the day. And I could have added so many blade dances to this deck, but it, but the final deck had two blade dances. We called ourselves a shiv deck and we had a total of two blade dances. No, no, three blade dances. Three blade dances, a storm of steel. Those were our shiv cards. Normally, when I was starting this game, I would have put so many more shiv cards in this deck, and it's really just not necessary. You you need you need your abilities. You need your different ways to accomplish things, to draw cards, to discard cards, get intangible, gain block. Do all of these side things, aside from just dealing damage and specifically blocking the attack that's coming. So it, it ends up being a quite complex deck, but we relied heavily on the dead branch, which we got early. We got a ninja scroll that worked very well with the dead branch, and then we just rolled with that. Accuracy and blade dance were some of the first two things that we added. I added a, an extra blade dance for Gale. And most of the other things were just kind of extra. The nightmare can be amazing in some decks. Kind of didn't matter in our deck that much. I liked adding it. I liked using it when we did, but it didn't matter too much. The terror, I don't know if you know how much terror does, but terror did a lot in this one. Our shivs were doing 27 damage at the end. Nine of that damage was due to terror. And you only need one. It's adding one card to your deck that causes you to do so much more damage. All right. Well, that was... That was the silent. <laughs> Gail says that I might have needed those extra gambler gambler's brews if I didn't buy that blade dance. <laughs> Trust in the blade dance. Librarian. We had a deck size of at least 35 cards. 37 is a pretty big deck. Champion. Defeat an elite without taking damage. We did that seven times, by the way. And beyond perfect, we defeated three bosses without taking damage. The only boss that we took damage to was the heart. And of course, c -c -c combo for playing 20 cards in a single turn. I think we did that numerous times. Very, very strong final score, honestly. I've done, I've done a final, a uh, an overexplained run with three of the characters now: the Watcher, the Defect, and the Silent. Obviously, obviously, that leaves the Ironclad. So at some point, I am going to do an overexplained run with, with the Ironclad. That will probably end this series. And I hope to see you all there, too, when I do that one. But otherwise, that's it for today. I hope you enjoy. The spire sleeps, and so shall I. Good night, everyone. Thanks for coming.